is this thing on? Let's begin. Hello and welcome to a Hedgehog Big Stream. My name is Austin, aka Zombie Hedgehog, and today we're going to be building a Rook printer, specifically the Mark I. Um, this is just released and has been an evolution of the Rook printer, so I'll get into that. How does this sound? Is everything working all right? I typically stream on Twitch, so if you want to check me out live around this time, uh, almost every day, um, there is a link in the video description. So if everything looks good, why don't we jump in? Okay. Okay. How about that? Is that any better? Might have had the wrong microphone selected. Great now. Okay, perfect. Yep, wrong mic. <laughs> let me let me start that back over. Hello! <laughs> and welcome to a Hedgehog Make Stream. Once again, I am starting the Rook MK1 build. Uh, I have a bunch of parts printed in Polymaker filament, I'll show those off. I have a bunch of hardware. I have everything kind of planned out on how to build it. So why don't we just begin? So let's first show the project off. This has been an evolution of many, many, many designs. In fact, I have the first, or at least what's left of the first serialized Rook. This is Rook serial number one. Given I've taken it apart, upgraded it, a lot of the components are now in this Rook, but this is Rook one. Of course, Rook zero is Rolohan's Rook, but um, this was the original design. It was pretty awesome. It honestly worked really good. I got some great prints out of it, uh, but the design had evolved over and over and over and over again until finally, the final release of this style of Rook. And it's final because the design is not changing at all. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, so the style is not changing. Is this mic blowing out at all? Is it too loud? Speaking on my meter. I typically use a different streaming software. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit of the evolution is this rook right here. Mm, okay. Put that over here then. Yeah, I don't know.
All right, we'll do it this way because apparently, um, yeah, I don't know. The microphone decided to just not. I'll try it one more time. Okay, so get this going for a second. I try to troubleshoot whatever is going on with the other microphone. Um, let me show off the build. So in the description, there is a GitHub for Rook. So right over here is everything you really need to know about Rook. There's all the files. There is the actual printer and uh, a BOM, so all the parts that you will need to buy. There's even a guide on printing, the videos on YouTube from Rohan himself. Um, but what's also awesome is that on printables, so if you type in Rook MK1, the actual printer is on there. Oh my god, 93 likes already. Wow, this thing was just posted. That's awesome. So yeah, this is the whole printer. All the files are available directly on printables, and these are not changing. They are what they are. But there will be remixes. So there's a lot of remixes planned and already active for this printer. Such as uh, a lot of Gulsifer's models. So there's the Rookery, um, and then there's a couple of other mod or um, parts that he sent over, or that's on the Discord. So there's a Discord, there's a GitHub, there's a Principles page, there's all kinds of places to find information. The best place is definitely going to be Discord. Um, that's where I would go to ask questions. Just go right to the Discord, and then you can be pointed to wherever you need to go. So I'm going to try this microphone one more time. Testing one, two, three. This seems to have worked. Okay. Perfect. Official Rook Mods collection on printables. Yes. Yes, there is an official collection too. I don't know where. Um, this is already in 63 collections, but Rilohan Design. Uh, yeah, there's one collection on there that is official Rook Mods on Rilohan Design's. Uh, collection so that's cool so all of the different compatible mods are on there and these should be vetted to work as well so you're not just printing something that might not be compatible but do check like if you install 10 mods make sure that they're cross compatible again check on the discord ask around that being said though let's jump into it this is uh, the current one I've been printing with. This specific Rook is an extra 100 millimeters tall. So this is a 300 millimeter rod printer. Looks like we have a cat that wants to join us. Everyone say hello to Ginger. Sorry, I'm not sitting today. You can't jump up on me. <laughs> yeah, this is extra tall because I felt like a little bit of extra height would be good. But this is the old version. This uses linear rods for the um, the Y, or sorry, the Z axis. The new design uses belted Z. So it's even more simple. It should be even easier to assemble. And I'm looking forward to it because I haven't tried it yet. So I'll have this one built and working, and I'll have my new one built and working. We can kind of compare them and see if the difference is make sense, which they should. And the best part is if anything needs further improvement, there can just be a user mod of some sort. Someone can make a part or slightly tweak something. What is this? Oh, the Magnum Rook is on there. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of different Rooks already designed too. So if you don't want the official MK1, there's a ton of other designs and after this video is published, 
man, there's going to be <laughs> many, 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 many forms of the Rook. So let's show you what I have. So right over here, I have two boxes. All the printed parts almost fit in one box of uh, filament. So you thought the Positron was cool because it fits in a box. Well, this at least fits the printed parts out, mostly. <laughs> and speaking of Polymaker, we are doing a giveaway for this live stream. So if you want to enter, there is a pinned link in chat. Uh, go ahead and fill that out, and I will draw at the end of the stream. And there should be also a link in the video description for those who are live. Let me know if you can enter that, and I'll check in on my end. So let's go over the rough parts, and I'll put them back. So this is the, the bed mount. The bed will sit on here, and this goes up and down the printer. Um, this is a random mount to convert from the stock board, which should be an SKR3, over to a Manta M4P. Um, this is the top frame. This is Polymaker PLA Dark Blue. And this is their metallic silver. So there's that one right here. Um, this is the bottom frame with the integrated motor mount. And a whole bunch of parts that we'll get into later. And a lot of them are actually modded parts. The only stock parts I have in this printer, I think, are is the main frame and then the feet for the printer. So as we go, I do have a list of all the components. And what I did is I completely assembled it, which is what you see in the thumbnail. And I disassembled it and kind of wrote down exactly what I used to build it. So hopefully we can replicate that. So starting with the frame, we're going to do the bottom first. So start with the bottom and add the feet on. This will provide a nice stable surface to work off of. And... Um, it's pretty easy. So we're gonna have four of our feet. They look like this. There is a printing guide available on the GitHub, but you'll essentially print it like this and then have preferably tree supports. Now, it does not need to be clean. Mine were not that clean, but it shouldn't be visible at all once you print it. And of course you can clean it up and make it look better if you want to. But four feet. I'll also note that there are, and probably, again, at the time of watching this, different basement mods, which will add additional storage space beneath the printer. I'm going to be doing that personally and looking forward to it. There might even be a power supply mount on the very bottom of the printer. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll answer as I go. How many kg of filament does the MK1 Rook take? I sliced mine and it was around, I think, 700 grams. So less than a spool to print out all the parts. These don't take crazy infill. It's only three walls, 40% infill, or even like three walls, 20% infill. It's PLA, so it's really stiff. Crazy, crazy stiff. Like this thing is, is not flexing at all. Well, yes, it does flex a little bit, but you have to really torque on it. And once it's installed, it should be more than enough. In fact, I've, I've built multiple rooks and the PLA has been amazing. So yeah, one one spool is enough. I would buy two and then do like a, a dual color theme. Looks pretty cool. So starting with the feet, I also have my fancy organizer. This is available on printables. If you check out my profile. But I designed this little sorting tray. And look at that. All the parts fit like really good. PLA Pro is preferred. Yes, uh, I like to use Polymaker's PLA Pro. Is this PLA Pro? Yeah, so a lot of my parts are the green PLA Pro. And they printed gorgeous. They're very stiff, but they also have a lot of extra impact resistance. And they work very, very good for these types of printer parts. But really, any PLA will work, at least to get you going. Um, but if you're going to start off, I do prefer the PLA Pro. But the frame is actually standard PLA, which is even more stiff than the PLA Pro, which could be a benefit. And I feel like because it's not 
experiencing any major um it's it's static it's not going to move i felt like it'd be better to have it as pla abs or asa for the hot end duct uh it's all pla you can use pla for hot ends um it's preferred to use asa but you can if you have a sock definitely if you have a sock on your on your hot end you can use pla we'll talk about the hot end when we get to that point all right, yeah, so starting at the bottom, let's do the feet. So I have these M5 by 10. You can use either socket head or buttons. Uh, let me just state that this is going to be considered a button head because it has a nice rounded top with a lot of surface area. And this one is a socket head, which is designed to be recessed in a hole. You can use either for either, but they have slightly different purposes. I like to use these, the uh, socket heads, for most stuff, and I like to look at them better. But for this, I have a bunch of these, and down in the video description, I'll be posting my BOM. I'll kind of clean it up and add some stuff if I need to. So let's screw these on. I'll use my other T-nut, T-handle. I'll also note that I already assembled this printer, so all the threaded holes are pre-threaded, so everything's going to assemble nice and easy. If you're assembling this for the first time, you might need to force it a little bit more. And a tip for when you're screwing into printed plastic, like PLA, ABS, PTG, once you get a lot of resistance, don't keep going. Just bottom out and stop. You're not going to gain anything by continuing to torque it, and you'll just end up stripping the hole and making it useless. Good condition, Allen Keys, with that button head. Yeah, uh, I don't like to use, and remember, you never want to use a ball end hex key wrench to torque because you have, and will run to the risk of um, stripping the, the bolts themselves. Usually not the key, but the bolts will strip, and then you can't do anything. So that's why I like to use just a straight up um, normal ended one. Alright, so continuing to put these feet on. And this will be modified over time, but I like to start with the stock build. And these feet also can take additional feet. You can either buy traditional ones, like what's used on a Voron printer. I can show that off in a second. But something like... It's around. Something like, uh, like these right here. You can use that. You'll just put it on the bottom and then thread it in. I think these are small enough to where you can make your own threads. Yeah, so you can just do that. So put in a screw and then screw it on. That'll add some extra... It'll make it slide around less. But not necessary for the stock design. What controller board or MCU is suggested for MK1? Good question. So this printer is designed to run Clipper. It really is. It's a Core XY machine. It's designed to go fast. It's a lot easier to configure with Clipper because every machine is going to be a little bit different. It's not like an Ender 3 where literally every single machine off the factory is going to be the same exact config. But since everyone's running very, very different settings and motors even, um, Clipper is going to be your friend here. And to run Clipper, you need a single board computer or any computer, like a laptop running Linux, and any control board that supports it. So you can run a Raspberry Pi, 
and then something like a Big Tree Tech SKR E3 V3. So the drop-in replacement for a typical Ender 3. That works fine for the sprinter. You need sensorless homing for the X and Y. So you'll need something with UART connected drivers. And typically those SKR boards will have that. Personally, I'll be using a Manta board. So this is Big Tree Tech's Manta M4P. It has this fancy single board computer on here, which will run our operating system and in turn run Clipper. That's all integrated in one nice simple package. It'll sit in the bottom, no additional wiring. I love the Manta boards. Um, they have also recently released some new boards with even more drivers and different layouts. So there's many, many, many options. I suggest asking over on the Discord if you're about to buy a board for it, because there'll be different situations where you might want one board over another. Or newer than ramps 1.4. Yeah, you can any any board that you want. And that's another good point. Reuse your components. This is all for the most part new. Because I've used up all my components to build the initial one. But you are able to take the majority of Ender 3 parts and use them. Power supply, board, uh, motors, hot end, etc. This is a long list of stuff you can use from existing printers. So you don't need to buy every single component if you're recycling or reusing one. And we can get into that further, but this is mostly a build guide. So let's carry on. So the bottom is complete, so it'll stand up. Um, the feet are even with this motor mount, so you could have some wobbliness if your table isn't flat, but adding those feet on or printing out additional feet, there's mods for some TPU socks that snap on or screw on. It started looking pretty good. So what's next? Hmm. Let's do the... Yeah, let's do the motor. Or do we want the wires in the way now? Let's... We don't need to do the motor yet. Or the control board. We'll flip it over when it's time for that. Probably... I can do the end stop. So this is one form of end stop you can use. The stock method for an end stop is, I believe, just hot gluing one on. So you can take your end stop and glue it on kind of in the middle. So somewhere where this touches. But what I'm doing is I found this mod, which will be on printables in the collection, that adds an end stop in the corner. And then you can take a stock, like an Ender 3 style, that looks like this, and screw it on. And then it has a wire already because it came off of an Ender 3, again, recycling components, and that should work fine. And we'll test it. If something doesn't work, we can modify it. There's another style, if you're more into uh, this one, not sure if I have that printed part handy. But there was a style that mounts an end stop right here. So essentially it sticks up like this. That one you'll have to do a little more wiring on, but it's a nice clean low profile connection that homes in the middle of the bed. So for now, let's put this one on. Um, this one is going to take some more of those M3s. Just let me grab some of those. Don't have those handy. Um, we'll skip it for now because we can put that in at the end, but that just screws in with those same M5 by 10 or probably 8 for this. So I'll put that aside, back in the box. I think we're already at the rails. We should probably do the gantry first. Um, rails are rods are gantry. Probably the rods, so we get everything kind of centered. And I have a special way of aligning everything that I'll show you. It, this goes together really quick, too. Like, once you get it going, it's very fast. Rods first, all right. So, I am not using stock rods. These are still 8 millimeters, but they're an extra 50 millimeters long. So, typical rods will be 200. And as you saw on my other rook... 
right here, the first one, that gives you about this much travel. Okay? So that gives you, you know, this much travel. So an extra 50 millimeters increases it by 50 millimeters, so you get more X, or sorry, more, more Z, more build volume on the Z. I think this one was slightly constrained, at least for what I need. A lot of people might want to print small stuff, like very, very small things. And if that's the case, then you can stick with the stock 200 millimeter rods. Uh, but I would personally upgrade to 250. And if you want to upgrade in the future, that's also an option. The only thing you'll have to change is your belt. Just get a longer belt for the Z. That's it. It's very modular. Although, keep in mind that if there is a stock mod designed for the height of a 200 millimeter rod, then it might have to be modified or you can't use it. So there's going to be a lot of different combinations of mods and printers. So just keep that in mind when you're buying the parts and printing the parts. So the rods, this should be a snug fit. It should go in and kind of sit in snug. There shouldn't be any play, any major play in here. It should fit snug. Uh, on the tighter end is better to kind of keep everything rigid because there's nothing else holding these in place. They're friction fit. They do bottom out on the bottom, but they can go through in the top, and I'll show you how to align that. But you put in all of your rods, just slide them in. The first time might be harder. Um, I've assembled this, taken it apart a few times, so it's gotten to just about the right size. In fact, some of these holes might be a little too big. So there's actually a mod over on the Discord that <laughs> it's like a brace for the bottom to make everything more stable. And of course, there's going to be other ways of getting these in. But do a test piece first. Take the same exact filament that you're going to print it with. And just print out one of these holes. There should be a test piece in the files. If not, I'll make sure that's added. And, and to be clear, I did not design this printer. This was Rolohan's printer, but I've been involved since the very beginning. So I, I, I don't know every single mod, but I'm aware of at least a lot of them. You can tape them to make it tighter. Yep. Yeah, you can add. So you can like add some wraps of tape around and kind of get a nice snug fit. But for now, this will work fine. This one right here does seem a little bit loose. So maybe uh, in the future, I might want to address that. All right, so continuing, and I'll probably zoom out a bit. We have the top section. But before we do the top section, we have to do the bed. So this is not the stock bed. This is what a lot of the parts are already not stock because I know exactly what I've been wanting. Um, it's very similar to a stock bed, except it uses this mechanism right here to tension in the bearings. This way, you don't have to worry about your clearance. You just print it and then tighten it. I like that a lot. This one also has recessed holes for your alignment, your bed leveling screws. So this is an example of what you might be able to do is have a screw on the bottom here and then adjusting the bed you just screw it and we can also get into what bed i'm using and why these bra uh, bearings i've chosen these lm8 luu so these are the longer eight millimeter bearings to provide even more stiffness i highly encourage these instead of getting the little short ones. So if you're going to build it, just get these. And these are pretty simple. They just kind of slot in here. They should be, you know, fairly loose. And you don't have to worry about tightening them until they go on the machine. And then for here, you have nuts that drop in on both the top and bottom. For all of these holes, everywhere that takes a nut, you might need to file it a little bit or kind of um, scrape out the insides to get a really nice fit. Because you want it to be tight, you don't want the screw to infinitely spin, um, but you might have a challenge getting some of them in at the first time. And this one right here, I actually ran out of filament, 
So what I did was I continued printing it in another color, and then I just uh, used my 3D gloop uh, PLA and stuck it on. And it worked uh, pretty well. <laughs> All right, so these both go in, nothing critical. You also want to make sure these are lubricated very well. There are videos on how to lubricate rods, but essentially you put grease in, like Super Lube or uh, EP2, and then you slide it over while holding the top. So you would put it on and then hold the top as you slide down to kind of force the grease into the, the balls, slide it up and down, and then repeat that a couple times until it's fully packed. So for this, this just slides onto the back. The back has the motor, and it goes in just like this. Be very careful to kind of put this in straight because you could lose ball bearings, but it should slide very nice up and down with little resistance and no binding either. That's very important. If there's any binding at all, stop and try to reevaluate the setup that you have before you continue. That is the bed. If you guys want a top down view, let me know. I have that as well. The top right here goes on next and it has pass-through holes. The back part is this. This will have your idler. We could probably put that in first. Yeah, let's do that. We'll put the idlers in for the belt. Make our lives a little easier. So for that... We have our bearings. Uh, every single bearing on this is a F9, uh, F695 2RS, essentially a flange bearing that you put two of them together. And they use shims to space them off from the frame. Mine just happen to be the Rain and Zoo bearings. I don't remember where I got these ones specifically. But a lot of my parts were purchased from West 3D. If you want to check out what they have, feel free to uh, click the link in the video description. So, this is a 25 millimeter M5. Every single M5, besides the feet mount, and even the feet mount can use 25 millimeters. So if you were to just buy 25 millimeter M5s, that could work. So I do believe these would maybe uh, sit flush on the bottom or maybe stick up a little bit, but you could, if you didn't want to buy another type of screw just for the feet, you could do that too. So for all of the bearings, this will be the same process and it's probably best to show, uh, show now. But we have the screw. Let's just do this. We have the screw that goes in there, and then there is a... This is called a shim, I believe. It's not an M5 washer. An M5 washer is a lot bigger, it's a wider round, and it's thicker, so it won't fit. These will fit perfect. They're about 0.9 millimeters thick. Also, you can 3D print these if you want. Um, I just recommend buying the shims as is. But in a pinch, you can 3D print them. On my other Rook, I have a lot of 3D printed uh, spacers. So the shim goes against the frame. You screw this up a little more. You slide on the bearing. So. You screw this up even more. Slide the next one on. Might need to back it out and then screw it up. Yeah. 
So that's like that. And then the tricky part for every single one of these is getting that last um, shim in. It can be a little stiff because of clearances and that's what you want. You want a nice firm connection. So what I've done and what I usually have to do is put the shim in just kind of where it goes and then use just a screwdriver or something like that and press it in. So you're trying to get it roughly where it needs to go, get it centered and then continue screwing this in. And if it's not, you can kind of work it back and forth. So twist this, see the whole thing's twisting. You want to twist and kind of screw in until it kind of self aligns. And I've had pretty good luck with that. And now it's in. It's pretty simple. Or at least straightforward. Then you can use your, uh, probably whatever it fits in. This one's a little uh, more awkward because it's directly in the frame. If you can fit your key in there, that's great. Otherwise, you might need to uh, just do this a bunch of times. Or use a ball. The nice thing about the ball ended keys is that you can come at them at an angle. That's the whole point, is that they don't have to be centered. So you can use this to screw them in. But when you get to the very end, you want to use the other side to torque it to get nice and tight. Never apply torque directly on one of these ball ends. Uh, a lot of excessive torque. So get it in until it starts to become a little overwhelmingly tight. And then torque it up using this. I'm personally very excited about this printer because I'll be able to make mods for it myself and test some stuff out. You know, what if I want to just try something, try a new extruder, try this, try that. I can just make a part up real quick for this. There's a lot of mounting holes on the frame. There's all kinds of holes. The entire step file for this printer is available. You can download it, edit it, make mods. It's all perfectly fine to do and encouraged. So that is that back idler. Should be, the bearings should be nice and snug so they don't move back and forth in this direction, but they should be free spinning. And this part is easier to do when it's not on the frame. But the next part is the frame. So let's raise this back up right here. And there is a direction in which this goes in. It can physically go in this way and this way. But on the bottom, you'll see that there's slots for nuts. I did put these in already. You just slot in these uh, M3 nuts. I had to, on a couple of them, thread in a, a screw to kind of force them into place. But once they are, they stay in fairly well. So there are four nuts on here for each set of linear rails. There are two in the back corners, one, two, for the motor mounts. And there are two slots on the front, one, two, for the front um, idlers. So those are already put in to save time and because I tested out this assembly already. So this goes with the nuts down so that the, the, the screws for the rods will pull the nuts up into the frame and lock it in place. So now you have this. You have the frame where you need to attach this top on. What I would do first is take some type of hammer or something, something that won't mar the surface of this or at least damage it too much. What I have, and this is available in printables, is a little NEMA 17 hammer. So I found that using a old broken Neo motor uh, works very good for pounding these rods in. So you can take these and kind of tap them lightly to get them into place. So I would tap these in. Those are already in. Just make sure they're bottomed out. 
be, you know, nice and gentle. And then for this, it's very, very, very useful. I believe you can use something like a brass hammer or something, or a rubber mallet, if you have to. But if you don't, and you have a spare motor, you can print out this little mount and use that, or just use it by hand. But I like the, the hammer. <laughs> and then, again, I like to use the hammer because now we have this frame that has to be all pushed in kind of evenly. So I have to go around and kind of do some light taps on each side and kind of work it in evenly. These should be nice and snug again. This shouldn't be easy to press through because you don't want the frame coming apart. Remember, this is your your at your Z for your frame. Every tool is a hammer. Yep, exactly. But this actually has a nice flat surface and works well. So you want to keep going. until the rods are flush with the top. You don't go, you don't want to go any further than that. Uh, if they do, like this one is actually a little bit loose. You can see that. Um, again, you can try to stiffen it using tape or something, uh, maybe even heating up your soldering iron and making some extra resistance in there. It's PLA, so it's workable. But if you're using the stock config, these linear rails are going to be 200 millimeters long. So they'll cover the end of it, so it can't physically press through. If you're using 150 millimeter rods like I am, a Gulsifer has designed a special mount that provides that stopping point right here. So that'll sit on here and we'll stop it from coming through. And again, I've, I've disassembled this a few times, so it's not as tight as it should be. Once you get this alone, it's best to kind of leave it as is and don't touch it. Because you're kind of forcing the holes into size. And this is how you square up the gantry. By making sure all of the rods are kind of even. There we go. And do note though, if there is one that's loose like this one, if you have any issues in the future, you can always refer to how you assembled it. You're making the build seem really easy. It is. It, this is a very easy printer to build. Anyone can build this printer. If you can print the parts out, you can build it. It's like putting together a Lego set. Yes, I have pre-done a few parts, but it's mostly just a time thing so I can get this all built on stream. This is part one, we'll see how far I get, but there's probably gonna be a at least a part two for wiring, and then maybe uh, installing and configuring Clipper, if I can. All right, so what's next? Um, and I'll note now, the frame isn't sitting as flush on the table. So it was sitting more flush earlier, and now it's not as much. So I might want to look at, uh, is there a rod that maybe isn't pounded all the way or isn't level? Is it pounded too much? This is where you want to kind of check it. This table isn't very flat either. So it could be my, my stuff messing it up. This one doesn't look like it's coming through all the way. I think that made it worse. Yeah, this one's actually pretty loose. But again, Gulsifer's mod will help with that. And I'm also going to be installing side panels on this, so the whole thing will be kind of rigidized. There we go, that's that's a little better. Wish this table was more flat. Is the lens or the printed part warped? It's the it, This is a webcam, so this is all very, very flat. <laughs> Here. There you go. Everything is uh, pretty much spot on.
So this is what we have right now. What's next? Uh, I don't want to go too fast, or else I'm not going to have anything to stream. It's a very, again, a very quick build. The Shim Dimensions. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they claim to be one millimeter, but they're actually measured at like 0.9. It's a pretty parse tray. Yeah, I designed this. This is available over on printables. But I love this thing. It's so useful for what I need. And it looks cool. It's like Outrun style. So this is Outrun sorting tray over in printables. Idlers take a while? Yes. Yes, they do. Because they're more finicky than anything. That's the issue. Is just there's a bit finicky. Uh, why don't we... Why don't we do those then? Do the idlers and the motor mounts. These are close to stock parts. They'll assemble like stock parts, but they're slightly different. So, this is Galsifer's version. This should be available over on Printables. I printed mine in MMU. So I printed it off on my Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. Uh, I was able to get that going. And then same thing for the rear motors. They do have that logo that you can choose to paint and print in multicolor. Give something like a bamboo. It's very, very simple too. Galaxy Dark Blue. <laughs> yes, for the part sorting tray. This is Galaxy Dark Blue from Polymaker. I love that color. It's one of my favorites. Um, why don't we... I think for these, we can do... Um, put the idlers in first. So let's do that. We'll get nice and close up. Alright. Once again, these are front idlers. So this takes a bearing stack. There are going to be two parallel sets of of um, belts coming, like this one. So there's two. One, two. These can take 25 millimeters, or if you happen to have longer M5s, you can go up to like 40 or even maybe longer, but anywhere from 25 to 40 millimeter M5s for these parts. And as you saw previously, they install the same, except now we have a lot of, <laughs> a lot more stuff in the way, and we'd stack two of these on top of each other. So it can get a little tricky, just take your time. It goes shim, always a shim, touching the printed part because you don't want the bearings rubbing on the part. 25 millimeters is enough, yes. But if you have spares or a kit, maybe you've built a bunch of printers and you buy the M5 kits, then you might have some extras. Takes four of the bearings. So it goes like this. Screw it up. Um, again, I've pre-assembled this so all my holes are a little bit looser than they typically would. Screw it up a little more. Between the bearings, you need a shim. Again, can't have the bearings touch each other. So one of those little shims. Another... Flange, um, bearing, and then this one goes in. It's a little tricky, and you kind of need to unscrew the screw to slide it in. It's like playing a little like puzzle game where you have to line everything up. <laughs> it's kind of kind of fun actually if you think about it. Make it a game, and then once that's in place, the hardest part is going to be getting these shims in. So once again your um you're trying to slide it in to the top part so you can kind of use the part to slide it in and then once it's in there i like to use a screwdriver i press it in as much as i can by hand 
but you kind of have to use a screwdriver. Careful not to damage your part too much. And make sure that your screw isn't screwed in blocking it. But get everything kind of leveled. Move it around. Kind of move it back and forth like this. And then push this into place. Once you do a couple of them, you kind of get the hang of it. So now it's kind of partially in. I'm going to, again, wiggle this. And kind of just force it into place. Like that. And then once it's in position, I'm going to use my key and see if I can screw it in. And then kind of wiggle it back and forth until it does. Mine lined up. This one will spin like infinitely, so once it's in, it's in. All the tension is being pulled away, so it doesn't matter how tight this screw is. Just holding it all in place. There is a root kit in the works, yes. So if you want to build this printer, uh, when you're watching this video, there might be a kit available. So I'll post a link to all the kits, at least from Fabrico. And if West3D carries them, I'll post those in the video description so you can have a look. Um, but join the Discord, the Discord for more updates or follow Rolohan. This is one of these assembled. Not too bad. Let's just work our way pretty fast through the other one. Something fun about the Rooks. It's something I quite enjoy is because they're Core XY, they can go very, very fast. And because the stock tool head is also very light, um, the combination of Core XY plus light plus very short belt paths mean you can make this printer move. It's a very fast printer. Just because it's printed in PLA does not mean it's slow. I was able to run a speed test on mine and get it up to around uh, 800 millimeters a second at around 50,000 acceleration. And that's, you know, compared to a stock Ender 3 that can move maybe 250 millimeters a second at 2,000 acceleration stock. So very, very, very fast. In fact, way faster than you'll even need. And this is without input shaper. So because everything is so light and the Core XY kind of naturally cancels out a lot of issues, it's a very clean printer at speed. So if you're thinking this is like a toy, oh no, this can be a workhorse machine. And I've gotten some pretty nice prints off of mine. So I'm excited to see what this style of printer can do with the belt Z. That should make for even better Z. I've always had the best um, performance on my Z with either a very good lead screw design or a belted Z. All right, so that is in place. Screw that in. And some people are pushing their rooks faster. I don't recommend it, for sure. You know, run run at pretty stock speeds, which are going to be like uh, maybe 300 millimeters a second at 5 to 10k acceleration. That'll be pretty typical. At the end of the day, you're going to be limited by flow. So how hot or how much your capacity, your hot end has. If you're using a stock Ender 3 hot end, you're not going to get a ton. But if you're using a Volcano CHC with, um, um, you know, a, a, a nice nozzle on there, they could probably push pretty fast speeds. I could show you some prints that I did off my other ones. Is this not in right? Yeah, it's not. It's straight. So kind of work this around until it goes in and then see why it's not and what direction it needs to go. There we go, I got it. Not impossible, just takes a little bit of fiddling. So those are both on there. I could take a short break to show you parts that I printed. 
This was on that tall rook. This was a 16 minute Benchy in Polymaker PLA. Not bad. A little bit of under extrusion on the base there, but overall a pretty good Benchy for 16 minutes. And very low ringing, if this will focus in. Which it probably won't. There we go. Uh, very, very, very clean for no input shaper at all at crazy acceleration. On the previous Rook, this was a slightly slower bench that I did with more reasonable speeds. This is Polymaker's Christmas Red, their limited edition color. Uh, again, a pretty clean boat. I printed off this model on the other Rook I had. This is Polymaker's Draft PLA. It's a nice matte uh, PLA, PLA that they have. It's a newer one. This printed absolutely phenomenal. Almost no layer lines, given it is matte but it's a nice print. And then finally, this is a retraction test called the Eiffel Tower. Tiny, tiny, tiny little extrusions. I posted this on the Discord, but this thing printed very, very good using the Rook Tall. Taller than your stock Rook can get, but overall pretty impressive what a little Rook can do. And carrying on. Push this up right here. So you can see the top of it. Bring this forward. Let's work on the idlers. Get those in. So like I said before, you're going to want to put in this M3 nut before you install the gantry. That will hold in the main bit. So this takes... Hey, let's see, idler mount, 16 millimeter M3. And I like to use socket for the recess screws. You can kind of interchange socket and uh, button for the most part, but I like the socket ones too, or I like them quite a bit. This just screws in like this, just put it in the corner. And then, should be able to line it up. Might need to kind of finesse it in. Let's see, is that long enough? Uh, should be. Oh, there we go. Wasn't pressed in all the way. And because that nut is pushed in, it might not be aligned properly. So you'll have to just, again, play around with it and make sure that's able to go in cleanly. But once it's in, you'll be able to feel it because it's a, a nut. A little trouble with mine. Bear with me. There we go, now it's in. So kind of get it snug. And then the sides take six millimeter. And this just holds it in place. So this is six millimeter. This side does screw into the, the side frame of the PLA. So don't over tighten it, but just get nice and snug. Like all parts being threaded in. And I'll show you how this works. So that's in. And I'll tighten up this front one. The way this printer is designed is actually quite neat. Um, this piece right here holds it in from coming out in that direction and provides most of the force to keep it in place. Then this one just keeps it from rotating. So at the end of the day, it's a very, very rigid and the tensioning of the belts will kind of lock it in place in both directions. You'd be surprised. I, some people have doubted the stability of the printer, um, you know, how well the PLA holds up, but it's, it's uh, pretty good. 
you know, time will tell. And of course, uh, a lot of these components won't just last as long as uh, like a typical machined metal part. But if people are printing ABS printer parts and having them run for over 2000 hours, I don't see an issue with PLA, which is even more stiff in an open environment where it's not experiencing heat. Yeah, it can work. Get that in there. PLA is harder than ABS. Yes, it is. It's more stiff, which is even better for printer parts. The reason why ABS is used is for its heat resistance. And having a little bit of flex can be good as well for these parts. It all depends on the application, though. That's screwed in. Not bad at all. The rear motor mounts are even easier. So two holes, one right here that has that nut on the other side, and then same situation on the corner where you're just threading into the frame. These ones take 20 millimeter M3s, and I'll have my whole list, like my BOM, of specific sizes. I don't think the stock BOM states like what size nut and screw, etc., should be used for each application. You're just going to want to buy an assortment of M3s. If you're doing any type of 3D printing, I would strongly encourage having just a bunch of M3s in both socket head and button head, button cap, whatever they're called. Side here gets that same six millimeter. Again, be careful not to over tighten it because you'll just strip out the the part. Probably press it in a bit. You don't want to tighten the other one, so it gives itself room. There you go. And I would not recommend taking this printer apart a thousand times. Once you have the parts in. Eventually, these holes will probably get a little too big, and they won't hold well. But it's designed so even if you do disassemble it, the main force is applied to the screw that has the nut behind it. So they went in. I'll note that these are Gulsifer's modded motor mounts. Um, the stock ones are not a whole lot different, but these ones have a couple of advantages. Number one, they allow for 150 millimeter rails to be used and have that rod not come up. So it kind of locks the rod in place. And two, it has an even height. So when this does sensor is homing, the gantry will ram up against both of these parts. And of course it has the nice logo, which you can MMU print. So that's all snugged up. On this side, on that one, and I gotta put this locking piece in the side. This is so much easier to build than the original one too. It's been even more simplified. The original one was simple, but this one's even more simple. It's a simple Core XY printer, <laughs> but not the Simple Core. Rolo Hunt has another printer called Simple Core, which I built the a legacy version of, and that's a nice printer. Okay, those are on. Making pretty good time. Wow, yeah, this thing's gonna be pretty much done. <laughs> it does not take long to build at all. I'm telling you, it's this is a simple build. And if you have any issues, please reach out on the Discord. Rolohan's Discord. You'll get a lot of support there. And there's gonna be all kinds of updated mods and Stuff that you'll want to check out. X gantry takes time. Yes, it does. But, you know, it's all pretty low, low amounts of time. Yeah, 10 minutes. <laughs> Not nearly as time consuming as building a Voron. Okay, so these rails. I'm using West 3D's Berserker rails. These are MGM9C 150 rails. I think these are used on the X axis of a V0. So I picked those up from West 3D. And once again, if you want to purchase these rails or anything else that West 3D offers, there is a link in the video description. So I'm pretty happy about 
these rails, they're very nice. And I just lube them up off screen. If you want tips on just general 3D printing, I do have a Patreon as well. So you can join my private Discord channels and ask any questions or, you know, figure out uh, troubleshooting for different printers. I'm not an expert, but I am more than happy to work with you and find a solution. The reference, these nuts, or sorry, these um, screws that I'm putting in are... Eighteen millimeter, eighteen millimeter M threes with the nut already recessed in there previously. Yes, I wanted to make this build guide once the MK one was released, so that there's some type of step by step instruction besides just you know walking through it. All right, and this is very important. Make sure you're not tightening these fully. You want there to be some form of play. So this will be able to slide back and forth a bit. Do that for both of them. And make sure these are lubricated before putting them on. It makes it easier. And let me know. Are, is anyone in chat interested in building one of these printers? If so, did you start buying parts for it? Do you already have a Rook? I don't know if anyone has this specific version of the Rook yet. I think uh, maybe one person. So this is a brand new release as of the time of this recording. And there are mostly existing Rooks or modded Rooks out on the, uh, out in the market. And at this time, there's at least 50 serials, which is pretty cool for a little printer like this. I have serial number one for my original Rook. Eventually, I plan on making that work again, but I'm keeping it is just for the, the legacy aspect. So that's this one that's sitting behind me. And I have not serialized my tall Rook yet because I'm busy building this one. OK, once you get both of these rails on, they should be loose. What I like to do to simplify aligning is I like to push one of these to one direction. So either completely towards me or completely away from me. So I'm going to push this completely towards me on both sides and then tighten the middle two. And that'll hypothetically line it up in at least one direction or get close. There's nothing perfect and we'll fix it once we get the gantry installed. But the best way of aligning him is by using one of these adjustable squares right here. I'll bring the top down view so you can see this better. But essentially, you want to take this and then Slide this carriage all the way to the end. Be careful not to ever slide it off of the rail because the ball bearings inside can fall out. Uh, those people, I have, Doom Crew says, got most of the parts to build one. I've been holding off to build the Rook Evolution. So I will note there is going to be a newer version of this printer coming out in the future that has a different design but has a similar concept. What is the serial numbers? It's all in Discord. So the team of moderators just kind of take a look at it. It's similar to the Boron system where you submit a video of the printer working and then they take a look at it. Since there's so many different versions of the Rook, it's hard to serialize. And I think there's going to be a better system for serialization in the future. But right now it's all done in the Discord. All right, so to align these, take your, your fixed um, rail. So this one is fixed and then place the end of the square up against it just like this and then press the press this up against the the outside. 
and then lock it in place. So now this is your reference. Now you can take this and then slide it up against. Again, holding this in place, you're sliding against here and then screw it in on the very end. Okay. And then do the opposite where this is locked in that position you set. Take it on this side move the carriage out of the way, and then press it up against, like so. And then as you're screwing in, kind of press it towards. And there we go. So now I have the same distance on both sides. We can check once the whole thing's built to make sure that um, it's running smooth. But this is a great way to start, a good starting point, getting them both aligned. But you might have to tweak the distance between them. Alternatively, you can print some type of part that aligns them, but I find those to be a little less reliable. Uh, who knows? Um, maybe, maybe there can be a, a part created to slot them on both sides and align it. Uh, but since this is PLA on PLA, it might not be, again, completely accurate. Uh, so those are the X, sorry, the Y. Uh, y rails. Let me switch back over to here and bring this up even higher as we go. There we go. Almost done. Imagine that. Final stretch. Not many parts left. Now we have the carriage. The stock carriage. I can show you using my original parts that I printed. The stock carriage looks a little something like this. So two, two individual parts that screw in, one on each side, they can move independently, and they have the new ones have a, a hole. In them, I have that on that one right there. It makes it a little easier to put the stuff in, but they're both separate. And this works completely fine. But since I like to make these things move very fast, um, member of the community, Gulsifer, has designed a single piece, or as at least um, iterated on an existing model. This is a single piece gantry. Very easy to print. Prints just like this does not take that long and honestly it's just nice because everything is already kind of aligned and it just kind of works plus it should add a little more stiffness hypothetically especially when you have that rail on so it's a nice model it even has openings in the side so you can access your bearings easier and the whole thing stiffens right up once you install those um, the M5's in there. Alright, thank you Hexpotato. Thanks for stopping on in. And thank you everyone for watching this live stream of the Rook MK1. If you're watching this in the future, please leave a comment down below if you feel like this is useful and if you are planning on building a Rook. Or, if you built one, let me know what you did. Let me know what parts you selected and how you built it. Any challenges you ran into. Always interested in to hear that. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. If you're watching live, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If you're watching the future, also make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Helps out the channel grow. I'm planning on doing a lot more content like this in the future. Going back to the build, looking at the... Okay, so we need... Um... Carriage mounts. Six millimeter M3s. These you can put in before. So they go in these holes down right here. So there's one here. They kind of uh, slot into place. You should be able to kind of press them in. 
So one goes in there. This should be the same for the other ones too. The stock ones. Um, this will go in like so. And this one goes in like so. So only three screws are used to connect to this uh, carriage. That's more than enough. And you can see from the top, we have one, two, three screwing into the carriage and then the two M5s and then mirrored on that side. So let me go ahead and put those in. Any supports in the gantry? Nope, it prints just like this. It's designed to print without supports. Do you plan on doing any Rook mods? Absolutely. I've been wanting to do mods. I've been very much wanting to, but because the printer has changed so much and changed so quickly, I wanted to wait until the final version before really going down that route. And because there are members in the community that have already made all these mods, I haven't needed to. And it's been easier just to kind of print what other people have made. Now I plan on doing different types of side panels, maybe different extruder mounts, um, aesthetic mods, all that type of thing, spool holders. So again, print what the community has, but also make my own. That's the beauty of this printer. You can design it to however you want to use it. I'm going to take these and screw them in a little bit into the part, hold them in place, make sure they don't fall out. Uh, and like this. Okay, and then put them on. The best way is going to be to kind of loosely put them on. Do not tighten these yet. But kind of get one from each side on to get the whole thing kind of in place. Get it on, and this one. Also put that on. And then do the same thing for the rest. Kind of lightly screw every single one in. Okay. And this is going to be very important. You want to make sure that this part is parallel to the frame. So when it moves, it moves parallel. If you have it like this, you know, slightly tilted, then it's going to be very hard to correct in the future. Ginger. Walking on printers. Are you inspecting? Want to inspect the printer, make sure it's uh, assembled right? <laughs> uh, next, the best way on this version of the Rook, so Galsifer's motor mounts, you can press this right up against. And even though we're using 150 rails instead of the stock 200, it's perfect. It doesn't go off at all, at least where the balls are, and it's a perfect size. So it's pretty cool. I think that was accidental. And for aligning, all we're doing is just pressing this part against it. So we're just pressing probably like in the middle. Uh, probably not in the middle, probably like on each side. So like this. So press each side up against and this will be the same if you're using the dual pieces anyway. So press one side against these motor mounts and then screw one of them in all the way. Doing the outside one. And then on this side, push it in and screw it in all the way. And then screw the other ones in. Just to make sure that everything's aligned and makes the whole thing run smooth. go. Now we can test it and see how smooth it runs. So I'm noticing it's not that smooth. That's because I kind of guessed on the alignment. 
with the um, with that method I did earlier. So although it can be used and this can work, I would now recommend unscrewing this original one like so. So each one of these are loose and move this back and forth. It was a lot smoother now to kind of lock it in place and how it's, it should be. And now you can still wiggle this back and forth a little bit, but it's kind of locked in by the bearing. So you could theoretically use this as like an alignment method is just kind of putting it here, getting it kind of self centered and then screw this in and the same thing, go to the other side, bring it up without touching the rail and then tighten it up and then check again. So a little smoother. And you can kind of play around with that to get the perfect uh, feel. It should be smooth. It should move without any binding um, like that. There we go. That'll be a good starting point. We can always adjust that in the future. Very easy. All right. So next we have to do the idlers. So for this one, because these screws are on the bottom, we have to put this in first. So now we can work on the idler stacks. These ones are a little more tricky, but you only have to put, they're not stacks. They're just, um, just two bearings. So for this, I will tilt it on its side. And work like that. Uh, in fact, it would make sense to kind of prop the front up too to kind of get it even. Let me zoom in on this. There we go. So, starting with the inside one, probably get a good view if I tilt it like this ish. Uh, actually, let's do this rear one to get the idea. So we're going to do this one right here, the inside one. So same thing with the other ones. You want to screw this in. This one is a little tight, so I'll have to use my driver. And note that this is pretty wiggly. It's going to get all of its strength from these screws once they're in. And I tested this, and yes, it does stiffen up quite a bit. So keep screwing this in until it comes out a little bit like that. Add your M5 shim. Oops. This is the part where you almost want to work kind of upside down because now you're kind of holding it in as it's screwing. And this can be probably the hardest one to put in. Gulsifer's version is nice because you have access to all sides. But side bearings too. But just take your time. Get a bunch of these bearings out. All right, so same thing as the other one. You put this one in. That. We'll put this so you can kind of see. They'll kind of find their way in. They, they're happy. They kind of return to the position they want with a little bit of finagling. So drop that in, screw it in, and then the last shim goes in. This one's actually easier because the part has some flex to it. It makes it easier to install that shim. So kind of take the screwdriver and make a hole for it and slot it in. In fact, it's too easy. It kind of slides through. But if you just twist it back and forth, you might be able to align it, maybe come at it from the bottom to push it back up or uh, tilt it upside down. So I'm kind of just eyeballing it. 
don't even know where it went at this point. All right, let's see. Start over. Still at the bottom there. This one you can kind of come up from the bottom. And you might have to try this a couple times to get it in correctly. It's not the easiest thing in the world. These never are. If you have any tips, maybe leave a comment in the video description on how you would install these. But I'm just going to take off one of these washers or the, uh, the bearing so I can access that. There we go, take that out. There's probably an easier way to do this. There's always an easier way. But this is how I've done it, and it does work. Let's see. So, once again, put that in. Screw this in. Okay, and then get this one in. Okay. And maybe get that screwed in even more. And then maybe apply a little bit of pressure on it so it doesn't slide through all the way. As you put it in. You kind of want to drop it in and then screw it in at the same time. Maybe we can design a two-part gantry if people are having issues with this. Same thing for the idler is like a multi-part that just bolts in. That might make it easier in the future. And again, <laughs> nice thing about the printer is that it's infinitely moddable. So if you have an issue with something, make a mod for it. Or request the mod. You know, there's an active community of people who love making mods for the printer. So just go in the Discord and ask. But we finally got that in. Thin tweezers, yeah, those do work as well. You need pretty good dexterity to make this. Ah, uh, not really. Like, sort of, but you can kind of just spend some time with it and make it work. But it does help, of course, to have a little bit of dexterity when you're building this. I'm not going to lie. But that's with any 3D printer. And uh, compared to a V0, which is... I'm not going to say competition to this printer. Like, a V0 is in a completely different league. But a Voron V0 is going to be a lot more challenging to build. Oh, I didn't want to forget my shim. But V0 has a lot more steps. A lot more uh, parts like this, and is even tighter to work in. So compared to that, this has a lot more, a lot less steps, and is generally going to be easier to build. Main benefit, though, and why you would definitely want to consider a V zero is if you're printing ABS. It's a nice little machine for printer parts. Most Voron parts can fit on a V0. So if you're just printing printer parts, then you can consider one of those. That outside shim should be easier because it's on the outside. So it's kind of slotted in yeah, infinitely easier. Kind of press it in and let it do its thing. Perfect. So those are both in. And the cost of this printer, it's not bad. You can look on the GitHub for the current pricing, but if you reuse a printer like an Ender 3 or purchase a printer that's used or damaged, you can salvage a lot of parts. Like I was saying before, power supply, hot end, motors, 
all kinds of stuff, even belts. You will want to purchase some stuff new, and you'll want to have a couple of nice components if possible, but a lot of the stuff doesn't matter. Just having a functional printer is better than nothing. Checking for looseness right now, so I'm going to tighten it in until his bearings don't have any play to them. See, there's like no play at all, but they spin freely. And I'm going to repeat that on this side. Use a clip and zip tie for a Z belt or just zip ties. Um, the Z is going to be zip tied as of now, but there could be mods in the future. Zip tying the bed is probably not going to be as bad as the as the X axis because you have a little more room to work with. I'll screw this in. Prop this up so it doesn't fall down, and then kind of find a a good way to hold this. For me, that'll be pressing it in like that. Grabbing a bearing. Have all the stuff ahead of you. Like uh, even downloading my sorting tray and printing that, or getting some type of tray. You get all the parts out ahead of time and then for each step make sure to get the correct size and type for everything just helps smooth up the process if I haven't mentioned these are the same exact configuration as the previous idlers they're 25 millimeter m5s with the same um, bearings and um, whatever those are called, the shims. This one was a little easier to install than the other one. At least mine was. So you might get lucky. might just fall into place. You'll get the hang of it pretty quick. So I'll tighten this almost all the way up. And then install this last one. So how long does this take to make? I'm well, liking the wearer drivers. I quite like these. These are nice. They have a standard tip on the end. They're very nice in the hand. Um, but I did pick up this Harbor Freight kit too, just to have some extras of the larger sizes. I don't like the standard hex keys. I prefer the, the T ones. So the Harbor Freight ones are fairly inexpensive. If you live in the US, I would recommend picking up a set just to have. I guess in the frame a little bit, but we're just going to continue to screw these in. If I had a dollar for every time I drop this, <laughs> I can build another rook. <laughs> so let me know in chat and in the video description, do you want to see a specific BOM or maybe even a build that strictly uses an old, let's say, Ender 3? short one shim so let me grab one of those there we go right here so i think something like um you know if you live in the u.s you can at least at the time of this video buy a hundred dollar ender 3 pro and that has a lot of usable parts for this printer oh wait we don't that yet bearing and then shim Now that I'm building this, I think it's going to be possible to make a little 3D printed tool that holds everything in place as you screw it in, kind of like a, a spoon. What do you guys think? Kind of slides underneath, holds the shim in place, holds those things in. That could be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, if you have a small child, um, I don't even think it's small fingers, to be honest. Like, 
using tweezers or something else would, might be beneficial. Or building this upside down. That's another great option, just flipping the whole thing upside down. This one is giving me a bit of trouble, though. One from the bottom seemed to. Yeah, that makes sense. The ones that are up against a flat wall. Let's go grab another one. Can you stick the parts together with little grease? Uh, that could be an option. Some type of like, like yeah, grease or something to kind of give it some friction. Maybe. Maybe. Or even redesigning the part where the shim has its own little recess hole. I was thinking about that too as an option. But once you have this built, I mean... Unless you're building these for a living, um, once you have it built, it's built. You won't have to mess around with it again. Or shouldn't have to. There's not a lot of maintenance you're going to have to do on this. Yo, that's on. Perfect. That gets tightened up. Go. Okay. So this is a little more stiff than I'd like, so I'm probably gonna re realign the rails again. So if you, if it's too stiff, loosen up one side, the side that you didn't square up, which I think is this one, and then. Um, once it's free, then you can move it back and forth and see if it's any less, um, less resist or if it has less resistance. I think I might have screwed this M5 in a little too much. Let's back that off. That feels good. So I'm just going to move this over here, tighten this. Move it over here and tighten it. Yeah, it feels fine. These rails aren't broken in either, so they're going to be a little more stiff. Yeah, fix them, dude. You should build one of these. <laughs> We're almost done. More printed parts. This is the frame. And I'll probably... I might as well just do the wiring today while we're at it. Okay. The next part is... And yes, this does look warped on camera, but it's just the... <laughs> it's just the, uh, the camera. The next part is going to be the rookery. So first... Let's put on the last rail, which is right here. Same thing. I'm using the 150 Ebgem 9Cs for everything. Are the printed parts sensitive to uh, petroleum lubricant? That's going to depend on what part. But yes, I've heard that different printed parts react to different type of uh, materials. So be careful with that. Okay, for these rails, everything is 10 millimeter M3s plus a nut on the back. So I'll show you how that works. So start with the rear two, or like the outside most ones. Screw those in. Then put the other one in so it doesn't just like slide. Be very careful with this one so you don't lose 
the if you let this go, this lids fall out, and you might lose all of your ball bearings. Ask me how I know that. But once at least two screws are in, flip it around, and you should see them poking out. So, grab your nut like this, hold it over where the screw is, and then screw it in. I'm trying to show this in a decent way. Yeah, screw it in like this, and kind of hold the nut in. So then it'll start screwing to the nut, and it'll probably infinitely screw. You can use your hands to kind of get it on there, but then we're going to tighten it with a wrench after. So just get it in to hold it in place. This works for both Gulsifer's mod and the stock version. So just put in the other two. Just get those nuts on. Keep an eye out for updates to maybe both this part or any of these parts because these are all, for the most part, mods. And over time, there might be changes that make stuff simpler or make stuff better after maybe, you know, 10,000 hours on this printer, maybe let's say 1,000 hours, this one part is wearing a little bit more than it should. So maybe reinforce that, for example. So keep an eye out on the official parts list, the Discord, and all the mods. If you have any questions, make sure to join the Rolohan Discord and ask them there. So that's how you would install it if you had the two-part version. For the single part, there's an additional stiffening set of M3s in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. All right, so throw that in. I can see heat sets being used in this situation. That would work probably fairly well. So you don't have to use uh, nuts. But I also like the look of the nuts, so your mileage may vary. Okay, so now these are all in. It should look something like this, just these four, or the extra two in the middle if you're running Gulsifer's single piece version. Uh, the next step is to tighten them. I like to use this adjustable wrench, this little mini one. So I'm going to open this up and close it up on here. I want to align them so they're all square. So just take that and screw it in. It doesn't necessarily uh, matter a ton if it's skewed slightly. Because these holes are so tight, um, it should kind of like gravity align itself. And then you're going to align this to the bed anyway. So it doesn't, it matters a little bit, but I think it's probably fine. If you want to though, you can loosen everything up, press the rail down and then retighten it. Locking nylock. Uh, yeah, you can use um, uh, locking nuts on here too, or Loctite. Actually, I would encourage using some type of Loctite. Two. But this design should work just fine. Just give it a little bit of uh, tightening force in the future. Once you print it on this for a little bit, it'll naturally break itself in. So just retighten as necessary. <laughs> kind of like a car, right? Uh, tighten all of your your bolts after 50 hours operation. And that's never a bad thing for any printer. Check everything, make sure nothing's loose. You might have missed something too when you installed it. It's possible. That again. Right, 
is it? Uh, oh, perfect. So if you're watching this live, I'll be doing a Polymaker giveaway in about four minutes. So there is a form linked in the video description and should be pinned. Go ahead and fill that out. I'll check that in a minute to make sure that is uh, operational. Let's see why this isn't tightening fully. You can probably use longer screws too. I found that 10 millimeters works, but you could probably use 12s for these. Perfect. Loctite attacks. Oh, that's right. Yeah, be careful Loctite. Be careful with all the, all that stuff. So probably like a nylon nut would be good, with the 12 millimeter screws. Uh, oh, what AB motors are those? Yeah, these are Gulsifers. These are available in printables. Do I have a link in the description for that? Um, yes, yeah, so Rook MK1 plus mods and printables. Go ahead and click that. And then you should be able to find it there as a, a mod. So click on the, on the link and then click Remixes. That should pull up the mods. If not, the author will have to go in and manually add that to the mod as a mod. You posted a link. Uh, links aren't able to be posted in chat. Sorry. I can manually link it though. Is the collection for this? Oh, I have any rip mods. It's the mods file. So if you click on, if you go to the link and you click on the, the main rook um, link, you have Rolohan Design. You click that, and then you should be able to see the collections which I have not liked yet. There we go. Official Rook mods. And then Gulsifer has... Oh, cool. Some of these are called Legacy. If it's called Legacy, then it's for a previous version of the printer. Cool. Are they not in there? I guess not. Are they not added yet? Or are they not a mod? Sorry, I'll go back in the chat. Fair enough. Yeah, just, it'll, it'll be on printables as a mod. And I can manually link all the mods I use in the video description, but every, all the updated stuff will be on printables. All right, and let's see. Let's go over here. And let's take a look at that giveaway. Okay, good, we got a bunch of responses. Let me go to this over here. Perfect. All right, last chance to enter for a spool of Polybaker filament. I'll be closing the, the form in one minute. And I'll just be reading chat. So how do you like the build so far? We're just about done all the printed parts. We have the Rookery to install. I'll talk about that. That's one of goals for his mods. What infill did you use for the bed mount? Used 20% and it feels heavy. Yes, the bed mount is very, very, very stiff, which isn't a bad thing because I have some previous versions that are too thin. So the one of the existing beds that was designed, which is this one, um, or this is a remix of it. it it's a little bit flexy. <laughs> you know, if you feel any flex in this at all, that would probably flex when it prints. So having the super thick bed does help or should help out. 
Um, although I do feel like that bed can be reduced a little bit. On this one right here, I think when I remixed it, I added, uh, I took off 5 millimeters. So this is 20 millimeters, and that seems pretty good. And if you're wondering, this is the uh, the stock part for the gantry. It has this little cutout right here, so you can see what you're doing. And then this is about what, what we're about to install. This is the brookery. Cute little tool head that works very well. All right, let's close off that form. I think I have to go into my chat and unpin it. Over here. There we go. Remove that. And I'm also going to remove it from the video description. Whoops. And then you'll see in the description it says BOM for parts shown in the series. I have a list started and I will be posting that once it's done. Let me post these into the We love names. Go. And here we are. So this is for a spool of Polymaker filament. I exclusively for this one used uh, Polymaker filaments. I used their um, green PLA Pro, dark blue PLA. It's one of their new ones. And then metallic silver. So let's see. How many Rook cereals are there as of this point? How many Rook cereals? I can find that out by going into cereal announcements. Looks like there are 52. So let's pick a number between uh, 1 and 52. And then I will shuffle that amount. And again, this is for a spool of Polymaker PLA, PETG, ABS, or ASA. If you're international, if you're in the US or Canada, the giveaway has changed a bit where you now receive a $40 store credit to the US or Canada stores. And you'll see the information over email. All right, I saw a 16. Let's do that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Let's spin this. This logo is the Maker Deck logo. If you haven't seen Maker Deck, there is a link in the description. Go check it out. The winner is Tenrog. Congratulations. There you go. Let me check and see if you have information. And if you're in chat, there you are. Awesome. Go. Yeah, I get to try Polymaker. That's great. So what uh, what film are you interested in? Because there's a lot of options. Um, and of course, I'll send you all of the information. All right. So, continue with the build, which is, again, almost done. Uh, at least the main assembly. We have the Rookery. So, this is a tool head designed to have 
part cooling on board. The stock printer does not have part cooling. It uses a rear blower fan that blows in the part. It works, but um, this will work a lot better. So I opted for the 4010 version. It uses 4010 blowers. And it's a neat little design. It's pretty clean, pretty easy to print, and has some cool features that I'll show you. The first step is to mount the belts. So we have to do that. I have already assembled this, so I have the belts cut to length. They're pretty much exactly 900 millimeters. So if you have two sections of one meter belts, that should be perfect. Motor first. Yeah, okay, good point. Yeah, we gotta do the motors. So before we do the mouse, we need the motors. For this build, I'm using the LDO Speedy Powers. Focus. These right here. You can get the high temp version available on West 3D as of this time. But these are ridiculously powerful and way overkill <laughs> for this printer. Uh, any standard motor will work, although you do want matching motors. Because this is Core XY, both motors work at the same time, so they need to be pretty much the same motor. So two new motors, two used motors, etc. They should be pretty similar. I just seen if you guys paying attention. Of course you were. So the motors mount pretty simple. They slide off in here, and then you're going to use some size uh, 10 millimeter. And I am using washers. It's a good idea because you're putting a fair bit of force onto these. And because it can slide back and forth, it's good to have that extra surface area. So standard socket head, doesn't matter what type you use, but as long as you have a washer. If you're not in the US for the Polymaker giveaway, um, it gets sent out via the mail. So you fill out a form, pick what you want, and then it gets sent out. More information on the Polymaker Discord, I believe I have a link to that. If you're looking for just general tips on 3D printing, or want to learn more about filament or printer science, the Polymaker Discord is an awesome place to be. If you don't have washers, ginger, if you don't have washers, then I encourage at least using the socket head screws, sorry, the, uh, the button head screws. That should at least provide a little more surface area, but these are ideal. And I've also heard that you can use M4 washers, so probably with the button heads with M4 washers, that would work as well. Just trying to get nice surface area. Because this is PLA, if you have a lot of force on here, it probably could div it in. And yes, it does definitely dig in a little bit. So do not tighten these fully until you have them kind of exactly where you want. To any, to use a washer in any flush mount surface. Yes, you should. You should. There's some situations where if there's not a lot of force, then it's fine. But in general, I do encourage that. For reference, I'm having the the wires come on the inside. If you look at the thumbnail, I don't know if you can see, but the wiring is going to be pretty nice in this printer. I'm going to try to get as much done as I can today, both for continuity and so I have less to do tomorrow. So if you're watching this live, I'm currently planning and will post if I do but I'll have another live stream at around the same time tomorrow. Another shout out to my Patreon. If you like the work that I'm doing and want to support me, 
that is one of the best ways of doing so. You'll get access to my Discord and you'll have some private channels where you can talk and then just generally message whatever you want. Either talk to the community there or um, ask me personal questions. I plan on building more of these. There are more versions of the Rook available and there's going to be future versions. So this is not my final Rook, I'll tell you that. I'm planning on the Rook 180, which is a larger version of this. That's a different style. That'll be fun. And also the next iteration of this Rook. That'll be fun to build, especially if there's parts kits. This time the motor should slide back and forth like this but have a little bit of stiffness. Um, doesn't have to be completely tight or loose, just the ability to slide back and forth. Next, we need our... Um, what are these things called? Pulleys. On this side over here, it is up high. So with this specific motor mount, you're going to install these with the, um, try to get this on here, with the, uh, what are these called? Set screws facing down. And then kind of put it like that, maybe even even. It doesn't really matter where you're going to adjust it later, but in that orientation. And I'm putting one of my set screws against the flat part of this motor shaft. And then the other one up against there. Let me know if that's how you do that. And this side, for this specific motor mount, you do the same thing, but opposite. So the idlers are on the top. Or not the idlers, the set screws on the top, so it's just inverted. That's because one set of belts is lower, and both of these motor mounts are at the same height. And that difference should be perfect. We'll adjust it once we get the belts on, though. All right, so that's on. <laughs> what you want to do is push your motors to the front right here because you're going to tension it by pulling it back. That's how you tension right now. There might be additional mods in the future for better tensioning, but this is what we have now and it should work fine. It does work fine. There's not a ton of tension on these belts to begin with, so it's pretty easy to get set up, especially if you have your gantry squared. That's the most important part. And I'm seeing right here that mine might not be completely squared. Hmm. Let's we'll see. See how there's a little bit of space here? I'm not quite sure why. But maybe aligning the rails mess with that. We can always check it at the end. But belt tensioning should put it into square. Loose C rails. Yeah, that's probably what happened. That's okay. We'll fix it later. This is more of a build guide. But you'll want to make sure if you're building this that both of your um, parts are kind of squared up. And tensioning the belt will kind of adjust the squareness. So you'll be able to fix it that way. I'll show you how to do that once we get the belts on. So belts. Like I said earlier, about 900, 900 uh, millimeters, 90 centimeters, or one meter, and then cut it for the size. Go longer if you can. I like to have my Gates logo facing up too, so I like to find the logo and make sure it's facing up. So I'll run this belt first. This one goes in the top. It runs through here. Oh, I can loose, lower this a little so you can see better. But that goes through here like this. And then we'll sit like that. It's going to come around the motor. Um, if you have Rolohan's version, you'll just slide it through 
the part. Otherwise, if you have Gulsifer's version, you can just go like this. And making not sure, making sure to twist it. Um, push this through the top here. This. So just push it through. I like to push mine through all the way. And then wrap it back through like so. And same thing for this side. Push it through like this. And then like that. Pretty simple. Lots of open space. And kind of just make sure that they stay on top. We'll adjust it after though. And then on this side. It goes on this side. So you just push it in like this. And that's the top belt path. Pretty simple, very easy to do. Probably one of the easier steps. And then you should have about uh, this much once it's cut. So when it's new, they should be a lot longer and then cut them after you zip tie or use these adapters I'm about to show. Next we have the other set. Again, make sure the logo is facing <laughs> in the correct way, just for just for neat looking runs. Slide this through on the bottom. Pull this up, slide this through to the front. Slide that back. Um, Make sure that that top one you put in is actually at the top. You can do it in the other way too. You can start with the lower one, doesn't matter. Slide this through, push it through, and then push it through this side right here. That's belt pathing. Just like that, you'll have all your belts kind of in the middle. There you go. I think it's fairly straightforward and um, you'll figure it out once you go to install it. Next, you have two options. Number one, you can use zip ties. So you're going to put your, your belt through this part right here and wrap it around and zip tie it. Or you can use these belt holder thingies, which I'm going to use because I don't like zip ties. This was designed by a member in the community, available on printables. But there's these little mini holder things. Note that one side has a wider opening than the other. You want to have the wider opening facing the carriage. So slot one belt in like this in the top and slot the lower belt on the bottom with the wider opening facing that way towards the carriage. So slide that in, do the same thing on the other side, wide facing in, push that in, then we're going to do one side, I'm going to put both the belts in at the same time. And then go like this. And this is where you'd have like, you know, a bit of excess on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. But kind of like that. Squeeze them both in place so both belts uh, mesh onto each other. So it kind of clamps onto each other. And then slide this piece over them at the same time. Just like that. So now both belts are held on by um, by just one little printed part. No zip ties needed. It seems to hold on fine and pretty good. The other way. Uh, no, this is correct. So the wider edge um, allows for this curve right here in the belts. So then you just read the same thing on the other side. this 
if you want, I'll show you another tip. Um, as you're pulling this, th as you're pulling these through, make sure that everything is kind of where it's supposed to be, that all the belts are on their pulleys, because you're providing some tension on here, some form of preload. So make sure that all of the belts and stuff are lined up in that case. The piece is backwards. Oh, yes, this piece is backward. Yes, yes, yes. Gotcha. Okay. I always do this. So for the rookery, the overhang goes over the carriage. Good call. But with this easy part, you just take it out and then put it back on. No zip ties needed. Ah, uh, did that on purpose. Make sure you guys are staying awake. Okay. Once you get those belts in, what I actually like to do is screw in one screw into the gantry. I decided you're installing it backwards. Yes. <laughs> I thought you meant the other part. You'd be very specific when you're typing something in chat about like, you're doing this wrong. Be very specific. So, um, these are six millimeter M3s. So you just screw one of them in, probably on the side that you haven't attached yet. Screw it in loosely. Okay, just kind of hold it in place. Then you might as well put one in the other side too. Like that. So it's snug, but not completely tightened. Okay. Then double check that all your belts are kind of correct. Um, they look good to me. All the belts are on the bearings. They're all lined up correctly. And then you're going to get your, your um, initial, not to say preload, but your initial belt tension. So for each one of these, you're going to kind of pull them and one click at a time, you're going to kind of pull them over this until this is kind of tight. So this one right here, that's too loose. This bottom one though is also too loose. So you want to kind of um, get it a little bit tight so that it has a little bit of tension to it. But it doesn't really matter that much because you're going to be using these motor mounts to tension them. But the tighter you can get them now, the easier it'll be to tension, from my experience. But you don't want them too tight. Don't crank them too much. That feels good enough for me. And then push both of the belts onto the printed part. Or if you're using zip ties, this is when you zip tie one of them and do the other one. But I like doing both attentions at once. I feel like that's slightly better. Also have them aligned right in the first place. But once they're on, pressed together, they should pretty much just slide into the part. Just like that. Okay, now everything is, uh, it's, it's still pretty loose, but it's it's tight enough. I'll show you that once these motors get applied, that'll stiffen everything right up. And you can see that right there. Kind of pulls all the belts into place. So for these parts right here, just push them in as tight as they'll go. And then center the belts. So you want to make sure that the belts are kind of centered on this part. And you can verify that it works, aka that piece doesn't rub on anything, by just manually moving this part onto one side. That part you printed should fit inside, and then move it onto the other. And that's pretty much correct. Now we can continue to screw in the carriage and tighten that up.
but it doesn't like, look like we're going to get to the full wiring today. I'll save that for the next stream. But I'll get everything assembled at least. All right, once this is in, you want to kind of press down on this thing, you know, get them all loose and then press down and then tighten them up. You can even use a star pattern if you want. It doesn't really matter for this. Just get them nice and snug. And then this is critical. Make sure everything still moves correctly. So make sure this is able to slide back and forth. Just like so. And that both of these are able to slide back and forth. And next is the tensioning. Might as well just do it now. So this might be a little bit of trial and error. There's a couple ways of doing it. I kind of do it by feel. Um, or you can use the alignment method. So you see how this part right here has a little bit of a gap. Hypothetically, these two end stops are going to be at the same distance. So watch what happens when I pull on this one. So if I'm, if I'm tightening this lower belt right here, the gap actually increases. And if I tighten this one, the gap decreases. And that can show us from above. It's easier to see. But depending on the, the tension of your motors, that'll adjust the square of your gantry. So if I tighten this one, it gets pulled to that side. If I tighten that one, it gets pulled to that side. So you're gonna both tension and square up the gantry in one, you know, one, one move. Uh, but before we do that though, we just need to make sure that everything is aligned. Um, I can see, just from inspection, that uh, let's lower it a little more. That um, the spacing between these two belts right here is more than over here. So that means that this this has to move up a little. And you can see that too maybe here a little more, but this just has to go up so that the belts are kind of even. Make sure that everything is kind of in plane. So you can kind of eyeball it, or a life pro tip is that I think the width of one of these drivers is about correct. So you can just kind of, you know, eyeball it. Kind of like so. And another thing, if you're looking straight on to this motor mount, you can see like this, the rear belt is too high and here it's too low. So you're kind of just getting it into its rough, you know, rough straightness. By uh, at least like, you know, slowly lowering it up and down, kind of looking at it from the side. Something like that. And then tighten that up. And then repeat the same process for the other side. Loosen it. And then check the spacing. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be pretty close. Just so none of the belts wear, like, you know, if they're, if they're skewed, then they might move on the pulley at a, like at an angle and they might wear. So having that all aligned is pretty important. Looks pretty good to me. So now we can do the main tensioning of the belts. And this can be adjusted going forward, but um, I like to give it a little bit of tension just by hand. So give one motor a little bit of tension. 
loosely screw in two of the uh, screws, but not super, super tight. And then tighten up this other one. Just again, give about the same amount of tension. Do it by feel. Don't go crazy. Then these should now be a little bit more tight. And if I move this part to the back, hypothetically, it'll hit the back and have no gap. But as you can see, there is a gap right here. So to fix that gap, I'm gonna have to loosen up this motor. So the, but the tension is roughly correct and you can use a phone app and stuff to get the fine tuning done. But uh, for this printer, it's more important to be square than anything. So rough tightness. So I'm gonna push this motor back. You can also kind of pull it by the pulley, but make sure not to pull the belts. Let's push it by the pulley and the bottom of the motor until that back part just barely touches. And then tighten. And now, when you home it or move it to the back, both sides should be equal. Now I see there's kind of a gap on that side right there. So I'm gonna tension this one a little more just manually kind of slide it up a little and repeat this process until both sides are aligned. And that's pretty much good. Yeah, there you go. Easy peasy. Wouldn't it self align if you move the gantry with the pulleys loose? Um, self align. I don't think so. This is just the method I use and it works for me, but feel free to do whatever method is easier to square up the gantry and get the, the belt tensions. So this is what they are now. They might sound a little bit different and that's okay, but you can verify the, the phone app that the, it's all the same. Um, but this is a good starting point and there's many more ways of adjusting belt tensions. The belts will adjust the pulleys up and down on the motor shaft. If you loosen them, oh, I see what you mean. Yep, yep. I, I just did it by, by hand, um, by looking at them. And it seems decent, although this one has to go down a little. So you're saying to go like this, and then do that. It sort of works, except they go, it's not quite perfect. Let's see if I move it all the way there. Um, that seems okay. And you should use Loctite on all grub screws. That's another thing. For these screws, you want to use Loctite if you can, just to keep the grub screws in place. Not super critical for this printer, but you should. All right. Who's ready for the rookery? I think I am. Now this is where we're gonna start to install our first electronics for the printer. I haven't installed anything yet besides these motors to kind of keep the cables clean. But there's two, three parts to the rookery. There is the, the main uh, base, there's this part, which is called the key, and then the fan shroud. Correct me if I'm saying those names wrong, but that's what I call them. So I'm gonna put this piece on here. I'm gonna kind of go on there. There's a, a recessed section here. No, recess is a hole here, and there's a part that sticks out. It kind of goes on like that, and attaches with one screw at the bottom. Once that's attached, it's pretty much on there and perfect. But this version is called the zombie version, which has a additional heat set on the back that takes another M3 and kind of holds it in place. This is the only, 
only part of the printer that doesn't use the standard um, uh, hex inserts. Like, not the hex, but sorry, the, the nuts, the standard nuts. So, I prefer to use heat sets. In fact, all my other rooks were designed to use heat sets by default, so I have heat sets in there. I prefer them. It's nice to have both options, so maybe in the future we'll have both options for both rooks. So, heat sets were pre-applied on this part. There are one, two for the the main hot end mount. Note that they're screw, um, screwed in. They're pressed in from this face. This is where the this is where the uh, the hot end attaches to. There's one on the rear that's going to be screwed into from behind. There's this angled one that is optional, but I would recommend putting it one on. And the two top pieces, this is where the shroud is going to place be placed. So, this attaches like this, and then screws on with... Oh cool, I'm at the top section now. Um, um, I think that is... I have 10 millimeter with the washer. So for mine... I just have a 10 millimeter and then have a wash that goes on like so. And I'll screw that in to the bottom. And this is where, again, the instructions deviate from the stock build a little bit. That should be pretty simple or a similar process for the stock head. But this will screw in onto the bottom. Get started. In fact, you can probably pull this all the way this way to make it easier. Get this started. Like so. And then press down on here. So kind of press down and make sure it's all firmed up. And then get it nice and tight. This is the part that you want to stay tight. And that is pretty much on there. At least the, the main section is. And then there is an additional, I'm using an eight millimeter M3 a socket head that gets screwed into here. When you install the heat set, it should be at like a 45 degree angle. Mine's a little short of that, but try to try your best to put the heat set in at a 45, but this just gets screwed in like so. Give it a little bit of tension and that should hold it in place. And now, this is the fun part, our first electronic piece. I have chosen uh, for this build to use a M uh, Creality style, I think it's MK10 uh, Volcano. So it's a volcano block for a Creality. You could take an existing Volcano block and install it on one of those. And this uses a volcano nozzle. So this will attach to this part right here. This tool head uses these Creality style heat sinks because they're nice. It's a nice rigid mounted design and it's low profile. It's pretty cool. And because the fins are open, the air blows in and then out. So the neat design. Much better than a V6 in terms of stability, because you can physically mount the part to each other. And this part should have its own screws that comes with it. Some of the styles have recessed screws too. In fact, uh, this is the wrong... I think it's the right size, but... I use... these. Um, there 
and I'm so thankful for that. Oh, here we go. Um, 16 millimeters. Yeah, 16 millimeters for this one. And I'm using a button head to give a little more clearance and to make sure if the if anything's rubbing, then it's on a smooth surface. So a button head. This is something correct. Just takes a smaller size screwdriver. Have that like this. Let's get one in. Put a few washes in the heat sink and the mount. That's not a bad idea. It really isn't, but as stock, if the whole heat sink is pressed up against, it'll be a little more rigid. Well, for you standoffs. Um, I don't know. This is the cold end, so this is going to be much lower than temperature than the, the printed part. I don't see a huge issue with that. What do you guys think? Extra rigidity versus standoffs. Use standoffs or longer heat tests. Okay, sure. We could do that. And um, check the stability. So the same 16 millimeters, uh, but now with a just a washer in between to provide a gap. Might not be needed, but this is the only part that is, besides the motors themselves, that'll get hot. Uh, but I don't think you need standoffs. I, I'm just kind of curious to see the stability because I haven't uh, used this yet like that. Okay, so. I guess the screw and then a washer. And then another screw. And then a washer. So, and then. Kind of align that in place. Press it on, and use your screwdriver to just get them both started. That. All right, let's see. So the general stability, yeah, it all moves in one piece. Fair enough. Get it nice and tight. So that should help out um, a bit in the long run. Cool. Oh. And as a note, my wires are coming from the top out. So, like this. And also one thing to note, if you add these spacers in, it's going to push your nozzle forward, so you might not get the full build volume if you go further than that. Okay, so that's on. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to go and do before. I don't think so. Uh, now we have this piece right here, so the main shroud. There's a few things we need to do before attaching it. And those are fans, so it takes three fans. We'll start with the main tool head fan. Not tool head fan, the, uh, the heat, heat shrink? Heat sink, heat sink fan. Hot end fan, whatever you want to call that. The one that's always running. <laughs> or if you have a board that supports it, only running when the power is applied to the, uh, the hot end. So this is a 3010 fan. Um, mine came short, so I just added an inline extension, and that sits quite nicely up in this little channel. So it goes in like this, with that part sticking out. So that's the direction of airflow. And these take the same 16mm M3s. 
and you also need a nut to hold them in place. So that'll screw in like this. This one threads into the plastic, so it takes 10 years. <laughs> and then once it's mostly through, you have your little bit sticking out, you throw on a nut. And then kind of hold the nut in place as it screws in. Kind of like that. And then it doesn't have to be super tight, but just snug. And then same thing, I'm just doing two screws. You can do all four, but two is fine. Okay. <laughs> this would be easier to show, but Kind of hold it in place with your finger. It'll twist a little bit, but just get it so the fan is tight. There you go. Done. Next, we have the part cooling fans. There's two versions of this. There is the 4010 version, which is what I have, or the 3010 uh, blower version. So on my other one, I'm running the 3010s. Um, but I found in order to get a high performance 3010, you actually have to get a 12 volt version and then run them at 24 volts, which they can do. They might not last as long, but um, it'll put out a decent bit of air. <laughs> yeah, you can also just like thread in two screws because it's just, it doesn't have to be have nuts on them. You can just put two screws in there as well. <laughs> but we'll leave it like this, unless you really want to put two more in. Funny. That's not a bad idea. And I get, I'll also note that this is the Volcano version for the Volcano style blocks. There is also a shorter version specifically for um, CHC pot ends. So those are ceramic heaters that are very short and stubby. And those work pretty nice for this. In fact, I would recommend a Volcano CHC if you're going to run that in here. Which uh, does come in a version with a MK10 heat sink, so the Creality style. All right, and just to just to make everyone happy, we're going to just thread some short screws into here. My holes are pretty uh, stiff, so screws in quite nice. And yes, it does look better like this. You just don't need all four. Adds a nice accent to it as well. There we go. How's that look? Huh? All right, looks great. All right. Then I have my 4010s. Um, this version, and I would recommend, if you don't want to do any type of crimping, you can just buy fans that have a really long cable. And then you can just buy a splitter and then put that down at the board. So the fans slot in. There's a little bit of a recess for the wire on that side. So push it in with the blower part down. And then kind of make sure the the wire goes into that channel. Oh, whoops, sorry. Um, before you do that, you actually have to route the cable. So the cable goes in and then through this little hole. But a neat trick is to pull the cable out and then push it back through, just like so. Maybe move that fan out of the way and just kind of Kind of force it. You can even use a screwdriver to grab it and get out of the way. Let's see. 
There we go. Grab that cable once it's in. Then pull the slack. And then force that into place. Be careful with these cables. They can break. But it kind of goes in like this. And then slots right in. Perfect. Think of all the added weight. Yeah, I know those. Man, there are some people that will <laughs> eliminate like single screws to reduce weight. I think that's a little bit excessive. But, uh. I mean, this printer can move at least 40k acceleration. So, speed is not a concern, it's flow. So I'm recommending the Volcano version, uh, especially the CHC, but just a Volcano will be nice for fast printing and you get a lot of flow. I do have some 70 watt heaters that I might play around with. I think right now I only have a 50 watt. Uh, when we talk about the wiring We'll go over the power requirements for the printer and how to power it. So that's all three of those. Uh, I have my inline crimped versions kind of slotted into here. Like that. And then these two wires will come straight out. Up like that. Everything comes out through the top. And here's the cool part. This is what's genius. This fan shroud, which is purely aesthetic, right? It doesn't have to be completely rigid mounted. Um, this slides on to this part. So take all these wires, slot them through like that. And this slides in like a key. And then it takes two screws. Pretty dang neat. So it screws in with the, the shortest possible screws. I'm using four millimeter button heads. I'm not even using a washer. Again, this is a situation where there's not a lot of load on it. So just using that is fine. Uh, the Rook is designed for Clipper. Clipper is going to be the easiest to configure a printer like this because it would be very hard to make one like Marlin build for it. It's possible, but you know, you might have even a different thermistor or a different, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, it might vary just ever so slightly. Even the, the X, Y offsets, a lot of that you can adjust in the firmware, but for simplicity, Clipper is going to be the way to go. And for speeds, as it's a fast printer, Clipper is ideal. But you can run whatever you want. Um, just a lot of us run Clipper and we can help you out if you have issues. So that's pretty much it. This is on. The actual fan duct is not going to be super rigid, but this part down here is pretty good. Let's try Clipper, more familiar with RepRap. I believe you can compile RepRap for here. I mean, you can. It's just a printer, right? But, whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, that's on. What else we have? Yeah, and again, this is a... It's both a beginner and enthusiast printer. So you can build this, like me and push it to its limits. Or you can build it with whatever parts you have. You can print it in whatever scrap filament you have. You don't even have to print it well. You can just print it and build it. A lot of these parts are printable as well. You can 3D print your own rails. They're not going to be amazing, but you can print your own rails and it does work. Uh, you don't even have to use a heated bed. The stock bed for this printer is not heated. It's just a piece of glass with um, uh, painter's tape on it. And it works for PLA. 
works fine. I'm going to be using a V0 bed. I'll show you, the, show you that in a minute. But we're nearly done. The main assembly before we do wiring. Nearly done. Since we're up here, I'll do the extruder mount. Probably the easiest is going to be a BMG. So for my motors, uh, the non-AB motors, so the Z and D extruder, I went with these, uh, it's like a three pack of Xyltec motors. They're just pretty much basic, basic motors. I forget what size these are, but uh, here we go. Um, here's the information on the motor. This is available currently as a three pack for 25 bucks on Amazon. And it's something you can use a spare motor for if you want. Um, so for this configuration, ah, as a note, um, the extruder has to go on before the motors. If you mount it, how I'm about to, <laughs> ideally. I forgot. Since I didn't actually make a build guide for this, I just kind of built it as I, I would or what seems right. I'll show you why in a second. So this is a motor mount for this printer available on printables for a BMG. So I'm just using, um, this doesn't feel right. What should I be using here? All right, extruder, extruder. Extruder motor. Bowden extruder, eight millimeters, okay. Eight millimeter M3s. This is why I wrote this all down. So I'm putting my extruder in the back for a couple of reasons. Number one, it looks clean because it's out of the way. Um, you can still feed in filament from the sides using a short bit of reverse Bowden. And I'll explore different filament mounts or spool mounts. There is a version or going to be a version that mounts on the front rod right here. And then the whole spool is here and then feeds up into the side. So this is a potential mounting location for your extruder, but I'll show you why I went with the rear mount. And I have a rear mount on my other printer too, for this same reason. I think like this or the other way. I can't remember. I think uh, I'm actually gonna take a look and see which way I had it. How's everyone enjoying the build so far? Let's see, we're probably about three hours in, and the uh, I mean. We could be going faster too, but about three hours to assemble the main bit and then probably do wiring. Um, maybe a couple more if you're going a little slower. Looking at how I mounted it. Uh, yes, I have it the other way. Okay, that's fine. I had my wires in a very specific way and I liked it. So we're going to keep it that way. So this can just be flipped. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, actually, I think it's. Yeah, no, never mind. We got it right. There's only one way to mount it. Tangent. You can use your brain that the zipper on the Prusa hoodies from the opposite side. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. 
if you're wondering, this is a, uh, a Prusa hoodie. If you get so many points on printables.com for points, you can get one of these for free, so it's pay for shipping. And it is very comfortable, very warm, and very aesthetic. So, how I have the motor is like this. I believe. I think I pushed over one. I might have pushed over. Yeah, I think I... Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> I was playing around with this mount for a bit, so I can't remember which one. So I'm mounting, and of course, if you're building this at home, you can do whatever works best for you. If you have a specific rhyme or reason of how you want to install something, go for it. There are no rules. Happy printing. It's the only rule. Things like this? Let's see. This might be right. The motor gets mounted here, and then the extruder. I'm using a, a Triangle Lab DMG clone. Oh yes, this is why I did it. Okay, so because the filament feeds in from the top and then out the bottom, I wanted this lever towards the outside. So I oriented mine so that you feed in from the bottom, have access to this tensioning lever, but then it feeds out the top. So this is how it mounts. But you see an issue here. Maybe you see an issue. Small issue. Um, the screws are blocked by this motor. So if you're going to do this, install this first. Otherwise, you're going to have a heck of a time. So you can get these ones in. But I don't know if you can... Oh, maybe you can get that in. Let's see. I also have my motor, or my wire coming down. So I line this up as well. Yeah, you can use an Allen wrench, but it takes a while. All right, so this does work. And these are very long motors too. So this bottom one, you typically should be fine. There you go. That's screwed in. And then this one, haha, <laughs> almost, there we go. <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> so yes, Whew, it does work. Although I would recommend just putting that on first, just to be safe. Want to remove the bracket? Ah, uh, because it's already tensioned. <laughs> so I don't want to remove it. So that's our Bowden extruder. Again, BMG for this printer works great. It's still a pretty fast extruder, and because it's Bowden, um, any of the micro artifacts caused by extruders should be, for the most part, eliminated because you're using that Bowden system. And there's still quite a bit of grip on these. DMG is, gears are still some of the most common. And the Triangle clone is probably one of the best clones. We're trying to keep this cheap, so... Um, I don't mind using a clone in this instance. I think that's all we have for that. Now we have the Bowden tube. Like that mount. Is there a mod? Um, it should be on print. All this stuff is on printables. All the mods I'm using were downloaded from printables. So they should be in the main Rook mods folder or uh, collection. Now we have our Bowden tube. Mine's probably a bit longer than needed, and you can always trim this. It's easier to have it trimmed than <laughs> not trimmed. But this is a 450 millimeters, 450. So to have a nice clean path, I went a little bit longer than needed. So this will stick in to the hot end, like so. Pushing that down all the way. And then it sticks into the extruder. Like that. And if you want, you can use the little clips too. 
but I haven't actually had a situation where it came out because they weren't clipped in. Uh, so hypothetically, you'd want to install the this tubing first while you have access. But if you want to get access, it's not hard. I'll show you. Watch this. Here, here's secret. Secret tip. If you made it this far, congratulations. Here's the tip. If you want to access the hot end, you remove these two screws from the rookery. Put them in your little sorting tray. And there you go. Full access to the hot end. Pretty neat, huh? And then you can use your second, second cl <laughs> clip. Oh, what the heck did I put that? Um, ready to put this on. You want that Bowden tube staying in place. I just love how accessible that, that hot end is. And you can then, with two more screws, completely remove it. So if you have to perform maintenance, it's not a giant chore to get to. There we go. That just locks it in. Done. Put this back on by sliding it through. Ah. One thing I did, and you might want to as well, is zip tie these wires to your your Bowden tube right here because I found that they could hit the the fan. It, this one might I don't know how it did, but it could it could make contact with the fan. So because of that, I like to have it zip tied right here. So this is where the zip tying begins. So one zip tie. You'll need a ton of these. I like the little ones. These are just the ones from West 3D. You get them pretty much anywhere, though. Flush cut as you go. Like that. And then put your tool head back on. Just those two screws. Always have extra screws on hand too because you will drop one like don't just buy the exact number of screws you need just buy a kit that comes with excess screws to make your life easier all right that's on there i'm gonna do some basic cable management uh, as of right now the easiest thing to do is take your excess bundle of cable and then every oh i don't know we'll figure it out but every so often put a zip tie so put one here Right, the output like so. And then a little bit further up. I don't know how far this is, but probably like right here. And you could, you know, do some, make sure they're all straight and make it look really neat. You can also put a cable sleeve over the whole thing. That would make it look very neat. There are some you can put on after the fact too. But this works fine because we're using the Bowden tube as a way of stiffening the cable. Don't want your cables just flopping around. Just maybe like one right here as well. You can wait until later to do some cable management, but it's just nice to have them out of the way. And zip ties are cheap, so just use them up. And then actually, you will want them all to come off of one side, if you can. So I'm having all of mine kind of to one side of the Bowden tube right at this connection here. 
Show you why in a second. Let's trim all these off. There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> all right, now we get to here. So let's put on these motor wires. I like the camera view for this. I thought it was pretty good, to be honest. I normally don't have that, so it's kind of nice to have a, an up close and personal camera. And I thought I'd use the top down one more, but I just haven't really needed to. Okay, just like that, those are on. So what I'm doing for my cable management is I'm having this wire come down underneath and then this wire also kind of wrap around onto here. All of this bundle of wires, plus this one right here, kind of together like that. And like this. So, like that. Super clean, super neat. I, and this is why I'm running them all in the back so that all the wires are here. They're not making paths around the printer and um, they're stiffened by that Odin tube. So I'm going to slide this up all the way. Takes some time to get really good cable management going. Makes it look clean, plus none of your wires are going to mesh around. So that's what it looks like. Yeah, pretty good. Rod, the wire runs through the mounts. Yeah, there's going to be some cable management mods, I'm sure. One of them, I was thinking of just having just the straight bracket that goes from here to here with slots for zip ties. That could be an option, but for this, uh, this works perfectly fine. So we have our cables kind of like separating them so they're not tangled. And I have a genius solution for cable management. Are you guys ready to see? This is very cool. Okay. At the bottom of the base, right here, a little dark, but there's two screw holes in the stock frame. What you're going to want to do is take... Uh, let's see... Fourteen millimeter M threes. I have no idea which ones those are. They might be these, but just some random half long bolts, and screw them in right here. But not all the way. So put one there, and then one here. Okay, get them both the same length. Then, just grab a zip tie. Grab your bundle of cables. Again, you know, make sure they're not super tangled if you want them to look nice. Run them through, through there. And then run a zip tie around the whole thing. So you're not actually zip tying the wires but you're zip tying the the screws together so then all of your all of your cables are contained within there i thought that was kind of neat what do you think and of course you can design a printed part that does the same thing yes and then of course you know zip tie the wires as we go down but there are a couple more wires we have to put in 
All right, thank you, Pezlis. Thanks for stopping by. I'm gonna finish up as much as I can on here. Yeah, yeah, you know, probably like two more zip ties just to make sure it's all bundled together. But that's just gonna slip underneath and that'll be pretty cool. So, one more major wire that I know of up top, and that is our heated bed. You can use just a piece of glass that works with VHB taped uh, to some leveling feet. Yeah, that's fine. You can do that. But who doesn't like a heated bed? And not just any heated bed. This is the special V0, the new S1 bed. So, huge shout out to LDO for sending this over. And I figured what better use to use it on than the MK1 build. And then we could talk about power requirements. <laughs> so this is a special bed. Typically it'll be a silicone bed or even a PCB bed, but this one is a special um, special type of heater. And it's it's such a nice design. I love it. Really low profile. The heater is already attached. I believe you can buy this now. So what I did for this, it comes with just feral, feral uh, connections, but I replaced those with a JS, sorry, a Microfit 3. I figured this is about 100 watts, and that's what a Rapido has. That would work fine. And the thermistor screws in. It can screw into the top right here in the middle, but I'm realizing that this interferes with the frame. So when I redesign this frame, because I believe I'll need to push it out a little more because of this rookery, I'll check that out when I assemble it though. I'll make sure there's a slot in the middle for the their mister. Um, although there is another slot here you can screw into. So I'll be doing that instead. I think this is for grounding. So just like that, that's our thermistor for now. Ideally, you want it in the center of the bed. Maybe we can change that later. And the bed gets mounted with 30 millimeter. I'm going with 30 millimeter socket head screws and then yellow spring. So a nice stiff spring. So those go on like this. You put the bed on with the wires facing towards the back. And I'm actually going to run, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm either going to run the cables up top or below. I just don't want them to interfere with anything. Probably below is fine for now. So I put the wires uh, under the frame and then have them come out from below. So stick out from the back. And then put the screws in, put them through the spring, and then slide them through. This will fit pretty much just any V0 bed too, so you can use any version you want. You don't think the bed is thick enough? Eh, <laughs> it's pretty thick. It's actually thicker than my other V0 bed, which I thought was already thick. I think it's 8mm. <laughs> this thing should be nice. Alright, so we can't really screw into anything because we don't have any nuts. So, part of this bed mod comes these little adjustable adjustable um, knobs that you can print and install. These were actually printed on my other rook. So there are parts on here printed off of a brook. And then you just kind of squeeze the bed down and install them. Note that you might also have to screw it in with a screwdriver. Yeah, I'll do that. 
that. I'll start by holding this in place and then screwing it in. Make my life a little easier. Screw in. Oh, then that's just not in straight. There we go. Make sure your nuts are on straight. And then stick the screw in through. Screw it in. Put this on a little bit. Go to the next one. This bed might change in the future too. So keep that in mind. Always have a spare nut. Spare everything on hand in case you drop it. Goes on there. Gantry out of the way. You can put the bed on too first if you want. Um, even before you assemble this part. That might make it a little easier to install. There we go, screw it in a little bit. And then last one. Go screw that in. All right. Now you want to give it a bit of. You lose one. No, we did. Okay. You can also use. Other um, loving knobs too, if you want. But I like how these were printed on the rook. All right, so I'm screwing it on until I can feel the screw. Hook them through. There you go. Same thing for this one. And you want it tight enough so that the spring holds enough tension. So that when you twist this leveling knob, uh, that the screw will <laughs> should pop out, but that it doesn't um, spin. I I did use longer screws first. I used thirty five millimeters. That worked fine. I was just trying to make sure that it didn't stick too far down. There we go. So go with that for now. That is the bed installed. Uh, make it look work right. You should have nylock nut underneath the bed to hold the bolts so they won't turn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So underneath, underneath here you should. But uh, in this instance, I am just doing this. It'll be fine. So that is the bed installed, and we haven't clamped the bed either yet. That is. One of the last steps of assembly. This version takes bed clamps. As I mentioned earlier, I already put the nuts in, so I'm just going to screw the screws in. And this holds everything nice and rigid without having to worry about specific clearances. And there is a position of where you should have this, this guy. And that position is going to vary based off of your setup. But when it's at the top, you just want to make sure that the nozzle hits the bed with the PEI or whatever before this hits the top frame. And again, at the bottom, you want to make sure that it homes before the bottom of that hits the bed. I wonder why the bed was loose. Like, it shouldn't be that loose. Hmm. 
I'll also note that uh, typical beds come with much, much longer cables. Ones that can go all the way straight to the, the board. Uh, but this version, the LDO version, is, is, is designed to be used with Wagos in a very specific mount for the Kirigami bed. I had to look that up. So if you wanted to, you could do something similar. But I opted to just crimp on a different connector and then run an extension cable. I think the nut might have fallen a little bit out of place. I'll fix that in a second, but I'll do the other side instead. Go. It's gonna get these roughly aligned, and you can always adjust this in the future. is for now. I'm just going to put the two on there, just to kind of hold it in. For now. Okay. This is why I didn't put the wires in first, because now we have wires to deal with. So for the bed, right now I'm just going to have the... I'll figure this out, but I'll have them come out from the bottom. I might also have it come out from the top, but since there's no good way of doing this, I'm just going to have it like this for now. And then I have a little extension cable set that I made. One of these is just a pre-crimp thing that I had, and then another one I crimped myself with some silicone wires. So a little bit of a wiring harness for this. And I ran an extra conductor or the heater, just in case I want to ground the bed eventually. I would strongly encourage grounding the bed, if you can. And then, this is not the right connector, but it actually does work. It just doesn't clip in. And for the bed wiring, I found the best way is to come up like this, and then zip tie it on, so that when it moves up and down, kind of holds like that. So give it a little bit of, not tension, but kind of at its max tension here. So when it homes, it doesn't uh, get stuck and it has plenty of free range to go up and down. But it doesn't get over constrained. And then zip tie it on. There's going to be many, many, many ways of doing the wiring for the bed, but this seems like a good one. And this is something I could have zip-tied together at the same time. Put that on like that. And then I'll add all the rest of my zip-ties to both make it look neat and then make sure none of the cables are touching as the bed goes up and down. I'll probably end up designing a, a back panel for this anyway, which will hide all of this and then might give additional mounts for wiring, etc. I'm a huge fan of side panels, so I think the rear one would be nice. I just got to figure out how to wire the bed. So having this open right now is a little bit beneficial because you can just wire stuff wherever you need to. It's also thinking a drag chain might be cool for the bed. Way overkill, but... Drag chains are cool if your wires are properly braided for them. So a few more zip ties to hold that bundle of cables in. And you could sleeve this and make it look real, real nice. But for now, I'll just do that. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. I like the look of it. It's better managed than my other printer. 
And I'll take those new wires and then slide them through this little management <laughs> thing I made. And then push this one through as well. And I crimp the bare rules on to connect to the board. Almost done. I was planning on doing this wiring tomorrow, so happy that I'm getting that done today. Easier for continuity as well. All right, that's in. It's one way of doing it, but when you assemble it, you'll find the best way that works for you. Right, that's perfect. And then I believe that's all of the wires for the top of the printer. Did I miss any? I have the Z motor to install and an end stop switch for the base. That's it. And then I gotta put the belt on. So let's start by putting on the Z motor. Go tilt this down like that. Probably on its face so it's flat. Yeah, there we go. Push these off to the side for now. And then install the Z motor. Using another one of those Zaltec motors, be more than enough for the Z axis. You could probably even use a pancake. <laughs> I was going to keep these kind of managed too, so easier to deal with the wires. For this one, I'll have it come off of this side so all the cables run together. And then this gets screwed in with the same motor mount arrangement. So those 10 millimeter long screws with washers. with washers. The more I look at this printer, uh, the more I'm loving this color scheme. The Polymaker dark blue, uh, which is actually a bit metallic. And then the metallic silver. And then the PLA Pro green. One of these in. Again, you're not fully tightening them, but just getting them kind of snug so the motor can still slide up and down. Okay, more. Perfect. And then you'll want to slide it up all the way. Oh, this is too tight. There we go. Slide it up all the way, which is at least the amount of tension. Then install your point the shaft down. And then install the idler. Sorry, pulley. We already had the idlers installed from earlier. And I'm just going to roughly install this onto that flat section and then we'll align it later. Okay. Belts should be simple. I haven't actually run these yet, so figure this out as we go. But it looks like it should come like this around the motor. Come up from here onto the bed, and then let's see which direction does it go. 
probably comes into here and then down. So there's a slot in the middle of the bed. So where you can slide it in like this. I believe that's how it goes. And then you're gonna zip tie it together. That's for that side. And then run this other belt up through the larger open section. Through the pulley on the top, making sure not to twist your belts. It's fine. Through this top pulley on one side. Maybe. And then down through the pulley. And then this should be where the magic happens. So this one, push back through. That's held on in the middle. Then this one. It's way too long. Gotta get this one should slide through. The other side. And then just pull it back. Pull it back through the through the frame, making sure not doesn't get caught in anything. And then we should have two sides that are both. On that middle section, like that, and then they don't rub onto that other side as it goes up and down. Pretty cool design. So I'm going to zip tie one of these together. And this is something you could print another one of those brackets for that we had the hot end installed, that would work perfectly fine versus a zip tie. But uh, this is how you do zip tying if you need to. Just mesh the belts together, zip tie them. Pretty simple. One of those little sliding parts would work fine too. Actually tying mine together so I can do this single-handed. Zip tie it. Zip tie it right up at the top too. Perfect. That should look something like that. Trim it off. And then do the top. Top should be easier because we can tension it. Make sure that it's actually over the motor mount and that the motor is in its upmost position furthest this way. Give it some tension and then zip tie it. Sure you have enough tension and then tighten it. Perfect. And I'm going to cut off the excess. Beautiful. Now our Z is belted. Look at that. And then we're just going to do some light tensioning. So um, pulling the, pushing the motor down, we'll tension it. But there's a special, a little bit of special sauce on this one. Um, and we forgot to install a nut. Ah, on the back side of here, there's a nut, and then you can use a a screw that slides in and that pushes down on the motor to keep it tensioned. But I did, uh, 
I should not put that in. And I already zip tied the belts. I don't think I can. I should be able to. So what I'm going to do is unscrew this pulley. This. Keeping that on there. And then take out to remove the entire motor. So you can slide this off like that or remove the motor. Place those in fall. Okay, move the motor. That should just sit there. And then put in your, your little nut. So there's a slot underneath here for it to fit into. I'll show you that. The right, right here, is a nut. So put that in before you put the motor in and then make sure it's pressed in enough. You can even start threading your screw. I don't know what I'm using. What size is this? Uh, 14 millimeters, maybe. So put that in first a little bit to make sure you don't lose the nut. screwed in a bit. And this was a design off of the original triple core, which had a belted Z. Let's say tension the motors. Yeah, see that screw just fell out. So let's uh let's actually screw it on a little bit. And then pull it back. Yeah there we go. Put pull it back. Now it's in place. Then we can reattach our motor. So let's put this pulley on, slide the motor up into the pulley, and then screw the motor back on. Loosely tighten it. I'll make it pretty snug. That way we can have some adjustment on there. And I'll show you how to adjust it. This. Now it should have some ability to move. So make sure they're they're snug, but they're not tight. So you don't want the motor being able to twist. You just want it to be able to move up and down. You can then take this screw and screw it in. So push the belt all the way to the top so you have clearance, and then kind of feel the belt. A little loose, so we're gonna screw this in. This will press against the motor and push it down. Perfect, a lot more tension. So quite a bit of tension on the bed to make sure that it doesn't you know, have any room to oscillate when it prints. And then tighten these motor mounts once you have it tensioned. Then do a test. Does the bed move? Does the bed rub on anything as it moves? Is the bed smooth as it moves? Ah, this is the issue that I was considering, is what happens when this short connection hits the, gets stuck right here. So, um, I might need to work on something, even like a little bit of hot glue right here, that might work or have it run off the top. 
but I'll figure that out. You can also uh, zip tie another spot, like right here. That could work as well. So something like here. Just to hold it up a bit more, provide a little more tension. Make sure it doesn't hit this BMG gear either. Let's see, does that still work? Yeah, so that provides enough. I still don't, yeah, I don't like that. It can get stuck on there. So either sleeve it or have it routed a different way. Might be best. For now, I think this will work okay. You can use a little bit of hot glue to, to hold it in place. That's fine. For testing, this will work well and it looks pretty clean. And then one last thing. We need an end stop. So I need to find a couple more M5 screws real quick. Need the, the short ones that screw into the base. Ah, oh, they're right here. Yeah. So two screws. I'm using 10 millimeters and we'll see if that works. Do you have a long enough zip tie to go through the carriage and around the cable before the connector? Through the carriage. Through the carriage. So like, like here. So you're talking like uh, like this type of thing, and zip tying it like that. That could work. And here's a fun hack: if you don't have a long enough zip tie, you can put two of them together like this. Make an even longer zip tie. You can try that. We can certainly try that. Yeah, perfect. That kind of keeps it all in nice and neat. Thanks, good idea. Even now we have a zip tie in the back, but I mean the whole thing is zip tied. And that should prevent it from uh, moving up and down. So maybe we want to make sure this isn't too constrained in the top here. But it looks, looks pretty decent to me. That kind of stays in place as it goes up and down. So make sure there's not too much tension on here. Look at that. Genius. Good idea. Perfect. Okay. Now for the end stop. I am using this, which is a mod. So I'm first going to attach my end stop. I believe this is off a Creality printer, probably an Ender 3. So one of these little guys, and then I have a matching connector for it. It's just off of a printer. I can use some very short screws, which I believe these are for. For M3s, and these are heat set in. Well, I believe there's gonna be a mod uh, or a version of this that has uh, nuts. Now, if you're doing Rickery though, you do need heat sets, so 
I would encourage just using heat sets when you can. Okay. So that gets screwed in like this. I've not tested this yet, so we'll see if it works. That gets screwed in like that. And then this goes in the corner like so, right in that corner. So I'm going to screw that in from above. Using these 10 mil screws. I was going to put this in first, and I would encourage putting this in first. Because now I have all these wires in the way. And I didn't pre... This is the difference between a, a hole that is not <laughs> pre... Pre... Um, screwed. Versus one that is. The ones that are pretty screwed just kind of work. <laughs> but if you're just starting from scratch, it, uh, it's a little harder. I think we can read you on this. All these cable bundle. In the way. It's got overhead camera view. You haven't seen that in a bit. All it's up to install after this for the main section is the Manta board. That's the one I'm, I've opted to, to use because it has a built-in, essentially, equivalent of a Raspberry Pi. And then I can run Clipper on it directly. That's what it's designed for. I have to opt for the nut Inserted away heat sets are hard to find. Converting order from Ellie with no guarantee receive the order. Okay, interesting. And that's I think that's why uh, the main printer was designed for heat sets. So if heat sets are an option, I'm wondering because the rookery it does require a fair bit. Would you like it either redesigned for nuts somehow um which might limit build volume or a different design you're a tap through yes yes you can um but this is you're essentially tapping right now like i'm tapping that's that's what's happening. Except having to hold the printer and hold the bed up at the same time. Um, there we go. That's in there. And this is probably not going to give us full Z, but that is okay because we already have increased Z. And there is another mod that puts the... Yeah, so that's not, um, that can probably go lower. But there's another mod that puts the end stop right up here. So the bed comes right down to here to get extra Z out of your, out of your printer. But for now, this should work fine. Yeah, it seems like that would be pretty consistent for homing. You can also use sensorless homing too. That's an option. I might try that and see. Because my other printer runs sensorless and that works fine. So we'll, we can try sensorless for the Z. Maybe have a, a screw that pokes up and then it homes on both of these two screws. That could work. All right. That's almost done. I know I said that like. <laughs> yes, yes. This is just like the final touches. And hypothetically, we're like two steps away from printing. And I will talk about the the power requirements as I put in this board. 
So Manta board does not directly fit on here. So there was a adapter designed and on printables. Power. A stock printer without a heated bed will draw essentially 20 watts max with all the motors running. 20 watts. And then with a hot end, you add whatever value your cartridge is. So if it's a 40 watt heater, you add 40 watts. So without a heated bed, this will draw under 100 watts and you can use a 150 watt power supply if you wanted to. Sorry, I believe this has to be mounted first. This. Yes, we mount that on. Um, now, if you're running a heated bed, you add whatever the bed heater is. So I'd say, again, roughly 20 watts plus, um, let's say, 40 watts for the hot end plus 60 watts for a normal heated bed of this size for a V0, which gives you around 120 watts. You can still use a 150 watt power supply. If you jump up to a 70 watt heater, now you're starting to push the limits because you have 70 plus 60, 130 plus 20 at 150. Hypothetically, that should be fine because you're not always going to be running your printer with both the hot end and the bed at max, um, max power. And you can limit in Clipper, you can limit the power going to a heater. So you can limit the, the bed from 60 watts down to maybe 40 watts maximum. You can limit the hot end down a bit if you have to, to kind of maximize um, your power supply. But in my situation, I'm running a 100 watt bed from LDO. And I'll be running eventually a 70 watt um, heater cartridge for this volcano setup. Okay, so then I probably need a pretty beefy power supply. And then, going one step further, yeah, one, one size longer screw, one step further, I'm also gonna upgrade this to a CHC volcano, which is a ceramic heater. It draws about the same thing as a Rapido, which is 115 watts. So <laughs> at the end of the day, we're going to have a 100 watt bed, 115 watt maximum hot end, plus a Raspberry Pi, like, you know, compute module board. So I'm using a 350 watt power supply. After this, I'm going to upgrade this bottom to a basement where it's essentially just an interface just with walls and then feet mount to that and then i was thinking that a power supply could i don't know mount in here then stick out the back a bit but that would put all the weight down at the bottom and it would still be it would still be fine. And I, I quite like that idea. So now I'm just pre-screwing in some screws for this very specific Manta board mount adapter. So this should work as is, but once again, um, there's going to be plenty, plenty of mods to choose from. Plenty of mods. I forget which way does this go. Uh, this maybe, I think. Yeah, like this. Another thing that I'm definitely going to add is a top panel for the, the lower section. I would encourage everyone to do that too. I'll show you in a second, but 
because the back of the board has exposed pins, you could just drop a screw on there and short out terminals. I don't, I don't encourage, uh, you know, uh, destroying your board. So we'll get this screwed in. Lines up perfect to the frame. Very nice design. It's available in printables. Um, but once we get this board in, it's going to be uh, a little top heavy. Uh, it's going to be like, let's see, yeah, like this. Like that. So you see the issue that stuff can just fall on here. So you should print off a panel that goes on the top of this. I might try to make something clear. I thought that would be cool. I have some poly smooth from Polymaker we can play around with. See if we can make like a semi clear top panel. Yeah. Okay, and then this lower section, this just mounts with four millimeter M3s right into this part, right into plastic. No. No mounts required, or no heat sets required. Before I close this out, remember that uh, there might be kits for this available in the future, so make sure to check the description. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. If you want to see more root content in general, let me know in the comments below. And comment if you are interested in this printer. I'm considering selling parts like frame kits, printed parts. So if you're interested in that, let me know over on the Discord. I'll eventually set something up a little more official. But I'll have that for now. Man, I cannot screw these in. Um, this is a nice and easy print, but you have to have an Ender 3 sized bed. So if you have a Prusa Mini as your main printer, you can't print this as is. You have to have a larger printer. But that's what the bottom looks like. And then this is the point where you just wire it. So <laughs> you just connect all the things. So your Z-stepper, which for some reason the Zaltec ones come with just a, a DuPont um, without checking the specific direction. Your Z goes into the Z slot. probably crimp on a connection if I was myself and I will in the future but for now we'll do that I have our AB motors technically they do um, doesn't matter which port you plug them in but we can just reconfigure that in the software so it looks like uh, yeah, it goes X and Y A and B The extruder is another one of those JST connections. Which I will probably rewire. Just plug them in the same way. My goal was to come up with a list of a whole set that you don't need to do any crimping with. Can I scare mini pop moss bed on the park clean fan? Yeah, I was trying to come up with a list that you didn't have to crimp. You can just like, you know, have everything pre-assembled. And for most components, you can do that. Okay, this is the hot end wiring. So I don't actually, I've never used this board before. Let's see. Motor bed. 
Um, is there a silk screen on the bottom? E0, heated bed. Okay, so this lower one is extruder. And they're on the front for some reason. Um, this might be an issue in some cases, but the heat bed stuff is on the front. So we're going to unscrew the terminals. We're going to call it new, which is for X and Y. Well, I don't have X and Y. I have A and B. So this is a core X, Y. It doesn't technically matter which you which port you plug it into, as long as you define it correctly in the software. Okay. So here's the issue with the Manta board on this printer. It's that because we have a motor here, we can't put, we can't reverse this. So the heater wires have to come out the front, but there's also the front IO right here. So when we design a basement mod, it's going to have to go like this, like, you know, come down and then recess these ports and they come back out a little bit jank, but it should work. Right, uh, and then this other one is the bed. I do have the extra lead in case I want to ground it in the future. Which, again, I strongly encourage. Um, you don't need to ground the frame on this printer. I don't think that would get you very far. So no frame ground, but uh, the bed, bed would definitely be a good idea. Not screw it at all. Okay. That. Okay. That's on there with that little extra wire kind of dangling. It's fine. And then we have uh, these two cables are for our fans. And on this board, it does appear right here that we have a fan. So there's fan, um, fan zero, fan one, fan two A and three B. I believe in the Manta config file over here. Most, most if not all of Big Tree Tech stuff is on GitHub. So you can go to GitHub um, and look at hardware, check pinout, and this gives you a pinout of everything. So I'm looking right now over here at the fans. So it's fan 0, fan 1, fan 2A, and 3B. If you look, fan 2B and 2A are the same. Okay, so fan 3B. Does that mean 2B? Or is there another fan header somewhere that I can't see? I'm assuming that these two are linked together. I'm assuming they are. We could test that, but uh, although on most boards, this is not the case. So if you're running those dual fans, you'll have to run a splitter. But I think that's, that's how you can install them on the Manta board, if that's the case. If not, please correct me down in the description, although you'll probably find out pretty fast if it doesn't work. So I'll configure those two as my part cooling fan and clipper. And I guess we'll do that on tomorrow's stream. We'll set up Clipper on the Sprinter and the power supply. This right here is our um, yeah hot end thermistor. I can just kind of tell because of where it goes. 
so forth. There, Mister. Um, I have Mister. Bed, and then there, Mister. TH0, so Thermistor for Extruder 0, which is our main extruder, because we only have one. The bed Thermistor is this one right here, as I had stolen a cable, just like that. This one is our main fan for the hot end. That's usually fan 1. Fan 0 is usually our part cooling fan. So if I wanted to, I could take both of these and make a custom crimp connection that plugs into there. But for the sake of this board, I'll do that. Although that would be a great idea. So you cut both of these and then you just, not ideal, but you crimp two wires into one connection or you buy or make a uh, splitter. And I think that's just about it. Now for wire management, oh boy, um, not a lot of room, <laughs> I'll be honest. Not a lot of room. So I would just kind of neatly, you know, neatly make everything go in its own, sp spend some time with cable management. But there's not any mounts under here. So yeah, uh, definitely find some way of managing these cables. If possible, cut and crimp to size, but you can utilize all the space here. And once there's a top cover, you can use that a bit more. But let's see what it looks if this was managed properly. So I'm just gonna put this down here for now, tilt it back up. The bed, yeah, I could even, it could even sit flat because there's so many wires. Uh. Yeah, I'm just not going to. <laughs> All right, something like this. Good enough, huh? So, what do you think? This is essentially the Rook MK1. Just loosen the wires. <laughs> we actually have to add feet in this one. Just for the wires. But yeah, I think that came out pretty good. There's a lot more to do with it. In terms of setting up Clipper. I also have to set the power supply. Something easy you can do for this build is just get an external 20 sorry, 24 volt power supply. Oh. We missed one important thing. That is the end stop for the Z or the Z. Did I say Z? Did I just say Z? Oh my god. <laughs> I did. I hang out with the Canadians too long. Alright, so this plugs in where? I didn't see this earlier. The three pin goes into the end stop. And then this plugs in to where? There we go, Z and stop. So it's going to use probably these two pins. Leaves the lower two usually. I can verify okay. that in manual, or sorry, the pinout. So it goes 5 volt ground and then control. Um, no, so it goes in the top too, like that. I guess I'm using a two pin, the three pin slot. Not ideal, but it does work. So you could just take one of those external power supplies, cut the cables and then slide them into your board and call it a day, or you should be able to, yeah, these cables are, a lot of cables in this printer. <laughs> For a little printer, so much cables. When you have everything routed so nice and there's like no slack, 
got to be slack somewhere. So, yeah, let's stick out the, oh my god, it can't even sit flat. Honestly, I think, I don't know if it can sit flat. Oh, I see. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's because the, the motor mount also sits flush with the... So if it has any wires under it, it's not going to sit. There we go. Ish. So pretend the wires in the back are managed. And that's it. That's what it looks like. Rook. Rook MK1 with Gulsifer's Rookery. And an LDO S1 bed. I'm going to apply the magnet on there as well. Um, show you a quick way of doing that. First, you clean off the bed. This is very important. Get all the oils off. So, spray it down with isopropyl. Now they have their screws in already. Okay. And then what you could also do is spray the back of this right here. This is a tip I learned. Spray that with isopropyl and wipe that off too because you'll be touching that against the bed and you don't want any oils. Get that nice little wipe down. Don't touch it. a little closer. Peel off one of the sides. Maybe. Pretty strong glue. There we go. So pull up one of the whole entire back faces. And then get this aligned as best as you can. So using your fingers as kind of a guide, get it kind of squared up as best as you can. Okay. And then once it's as good as it'll get, um, I like to I like to do this. So as I press it down, run my fingers back and forth, and then peel this. So peel it, run my fingers back and forth. This eliminates the need for a specific um, like card or pressing tool, and gets all the bubbles out. Any deviation or bubbles in this magnet will translate into your top surface or at least it could so it's a good idea to do this it's also a good idea to use a actual like laminate roller um it's like went a little further back than it should have but that's okay so that is good enough and then hypothetically you would want to like leave some weight on there overnight to let it set but i'm gonna call that good i don't have a bed for it yet so I can use the other one off of my other rook. <laughs> there we go. This is not the correct bed, but it works. I'll have a slightly oversized V0 bed. When I'm done. But there we go. <laughs> it definitely does need this top panel. Knowing me, I drop a lot of screws, so it's nice to protect that. And the power supply, last thing before I close the stream out. Uh, right now, I'm just going to be running this external power supply. So it's a little printed part on the back. It gets one of these slot-in cable things. And let's... That'll snap into there, like that, quite nicely. And then our 24-volt cables will run out the side. So we'll just have this kind of there for now. Not ideal, but it does work. Sell King Ring ships their supplies, so be good enough. And then eventually we'll have a mod where this goes here, essentially. 
So the power supply will be hidden on the base. I think that'll be awesome. Give it some extra rigidity and then it'll stick out the back a bit. But if you look, the power supply isn't any longer than the actual frame. So you're not going to lose any, you know, space. And that's as big as the power supplies get. That's all I got. That's all the time I got too. We'll do a top down view, take a look. So this will move in all directions. Got the extruder. Uh, making sure the Bowden tube is long enough. It's it's longer than it needs to be. I could probably trim it. But looks good like that. I love these colors. Once again, thanks to Polymaker for providing the filament for this printer. I'm using dark blue PLA, which has a little bit of a shine to it. I'm using the PLA Pro Green and Metallic Silver PLA Pro. I printed off these parts by Gulsifer in MMU with my Ra Rage Rabbit Carrot printer and Rage Rabbit Carrot feeder. Um, those look pretty cool, add a little bit of extra flair. The Rookery is just green. Yeah, I love it. Looks good. Now, what would you do for the base? Would you try to print it clear? It's not going to be perfectly clear. It's not like an acrylic panel. Or would you put a, like another, like a blue top on there? Because honestly, it's just going to be the back of a board and wouldn't look the best anyway. But that'd be cool. I don't know. I'm going to aim for blue for now. And then print off the base for it. And then actually, I might even work on a that just completely hides this power supply as well. Another thing you can do is mount the power supply on the side somehow. And one last note, this is not the default height. This is an extra 50 millimeters. So I'm using 250 millimeter rods instead of uh, 200. And you see why, because you get more Z. I was able to print this organizer thing on my other rook. Could I print it on here? Oh yeah, just barely. Yeah, yeah, so that's not bad at all. I think that's 150 millimeters tall, some, somewhere around there. So this was printed on the taller rook, but could also be fit on here. So yeah, this is our build volume right here, this guy, as opposed to the shorter 50 millimeters less than that. Can't print the Eiffel Tower. A little too tall. I have to scale it down. I'm happy. We'll see if it works. I mean, it shouldn't not work. We just have to configure Clipper. Get a clear, uh, clear acrylic. Yeah. You can also get like clear acrylic side panels. That would look pretty cool. I'd like that. Like essentially, <laughs> you could. You can go baller on here. So maybe get even a clear uh, acrylic base and then two side panels and then a solid rear panel. Still have to worry about the cable management for the bed, but I feel like a drag chain would solve that. Plenty of mods you can do with this printer. It's going to be awesome seeing everyone's mods and what they can make and how their printers perform. How fast do you think this printer is going to hit? What kind of acceleration? I'm running the LDO Speedy Powers, and we'll push them as fast as we can possibly push them. So 1.7 amps with active cooling on the stepper drivers could be possible. Drag chain, some type of sleeve. Yep, something like that. Figure that out in the future. And if I don't build another one that's better, this will be coming with me to the Rocky Mountain Rip Rap Fest. That is the current plan. So I'd like to have everything kind of integrated. That's why I want the power supply in the base. This can easily fit on maybe even a carry-on. So that'll be fun. 
So if you're there and this video isn't after, then come say hi. I think that's about it. Yeah, we'll call it here. So once again, thanks to Polymaker for the filament and providing a filament giveaway for this stream. Thank you to West3D for providing um, some parts and great service for ordering for this printer. LDO for the bed and uh, the motors. Um, I stole those from another build. So, yes, you did provide the motors and they will work amazing. Thanks to you guys for viewing and watching. And if you want to see more of this content, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below what you want to see next from me. And that being said, bye. All the information will be below in the comments. I'll update them as needed. Cheers.